Good evening, ladies and gentlemen in posterity. Tonight, we are going to be doing something a little bit special. We are going to be doing a Too Long Didn't Watch. For those of you who are new here, don't know what's going on, why is a Warhammer channel talking about internet drama and political debate? Counterpoints, the original channel actually did start as a politics channel. That's what I did 90% of the time, is I would just get online or pre-record for the pre-recorded episodes, I would do a 20 minute rant and I would just talk about whatever politics thing du jour. Hello, Sultan Al-Fahim, good evening. Um, so I would just talk about whatever the politics du jour were. And then if there was something that I wanted to break down like a Warhammer episode or a science fiction episode or aliens or fury or <laughs> like uh, the police movie end of watch, I would just break down whatever I wanted to because it was a new channel and I really hadn't figured out the pacing yet. What happened was I was torn in two directions. Some of my politics stuff did relatively well. Some of my debate stuff, some of my, uh, you know, solo monologues did okay. Some of my movie breakdowns did okay. But the Warhammer stuff did far and away better than everything else. So as a result, we started focusing on Warhammer. And I think it was in like, it was in April of 22 or it was in August of 22, something like that. We actually split the channels. And so we moved all the pre-recorded Warhammer content here onto the main channel. We started redoing some of the episodes and then we kind of still live stream political debate and political conversations, but we kind of put the politics stuff on the back burner. Now, that being said, some of you have been here since the beginning. I mean, uh, Christian Valeris pops into chat every now and then still. I think he's been here for a super long time. Gassim will still pop in every now and then. He's been here a super long time. Just got a DM the other day from Silver. He was there during the, the beginning days. So, so yeah, so, you know, we, we have a small niche political community. We just haven't had the opportunity to indulge in content. And I had a second child. I'll wrap up the explanation and we'll get into the content in a second. The... I had, a, I had a second child that obviously sucks up a lot of time. I wanted to work on the Bolter Project and other science fiction weapons projects, and that has sucked up a lot of time. And the truth is I just never had time for you fine folks. I just didn't. And the truth is I was always tired. So uh, how about instead of pussy aching, we just do it, right? I've had this idea for content for a long time to watch the old school debates, take notes on the old school debates, comment on the old school debates, and then do a 10 to 20 minute summary where if you, the viewer, obviously not the live stream viewers, but if you, the viewer, somebody who is tentatively interested in the Twitch and YouTube political space, if you wanted to know the broad strokes of the arguments within these very popular debates, then I could give you a 10 to 15 minute video summary on it. So we're gonna start from the beginning yes pussy aching is a very good word niz i agree wholeheartedly so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the beginning from my perspective i was unaware of twitch and youtube politics until i debated mike from pa that was like my first tentative touch with twitch and youtube politics from mike from pa i found or dylan burns found me he invited me on to reverie from reverie i got onto the prime kai panel from those associations, I became aware of Vosh. From watching Vosh, I got my debate with Vosh. And then from Vosh, I got to Destiny. But I think a lot of people operated in the opposite direction where they started with Destiny. And I think that the John Tron debate was the first time that anybody really saw his debating chops. Now, that being said, this could have aged horribly over the past, you know, half decade. We don't know. So it's going to be interesting to go back and watch it. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's go ahead and pop it up. I'll be react anding to this. We'll be taking notes in the debate. If you have questions, concerns, comments, super chats, whatever, throw it into the chat. And uh, let's get cracking as soon as... Oh, yeah, I'm going to keep the big screen for myself. And y'all can get the small screen so I can still talk to chat. And maybe so I can design some 3D models while we're, while we're hanging out. All right. Uh, corner camera. Y'all ready? All right, everybody's ready. Let's go. I'll turn that down a little bit. All right, boys. Let's bust out the notes. We're, go we're going in. Oh, there we go. I think I can hear you now. Oh, you got it? Yeah, how's the, uh, is, is this mic quality good? Yeah, it sounds great. Is it echoey? Okay. What's up, Mr. Stephen Bonnell II? Is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah that's the full name. Fun. You just completely that's doxed me, dude. What if my name was a secret? <laughs> Thank you, Niz, for the ten dollars. He's very busy today. We'll watch after. Hope your archaeology adventure goes well. Thank you, King. I appreciate the dono. You have a beautiful night. We'll we'll catch up soon. That's a bit, you're even more handsome in person. 
Well, Aww. thanks, I guess. <laughs> so what's up, man? What What do you want to talk about? I know we got into a little spat today on Twitter. I have to say, I didn't expect today to go. It wasn't really how I was expecting my Sunday to go. But, you know, with life, especially these days, you never know. Yeah. You never know how it's going to go. Yeah, I know. I know. I know what you mean. <laughs> Um, I guess it's kind of a brief overview of kind of what I told you. Um, we've been talking about a lot of these issues um, recently on my stream and not just on my stream, obviously across the entire world. Um, yes. You know, cultural issues and everything are at the forefront, uh, both American and international politics, what with Brexit and now with Trump and the United States. And yeah, it's kind of a lot of, a lot of shit going on. The um, gaming community typically tends to lean a certain direction, um, you know, especially in a post-Gamergate world where um, you find a lot of certain things being said. And I noticed that it seems like you are kind of on uh, a certain side of things when it comes to this kind of immigration and culture debate. And I, I guess, well, you... I do. Sorry, go on. Uh, or I was going to say, I, I know you have a very, very large outreach and whatnot. So saying you say some things was um, a little bit troubling. <laughs> but um, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Well, I mean, I don't think it's troubling. I think it's actually pretty common sense. I think the fact that people think it's troubling is what's troubling to me, because I just don't see it as very controversial. Could you? Uh, and, and also, the only reason that I'm maybe on a quote unquote side is because in, in this day and age, <laughs> staying on the fence is just useless because everybody everybody knows that you're just trying to avoid conflict at that point because we are in very polarized times. So I just like to at least state my opinion clearly. But what is it that you find uh, so troubling? Let's start there. Um, I this So I guess it's kind of this general vague defense of Western or more specifically like American culture. I, Basically, right. the problem I'm getting into is every time I read things, and I know that you're going to take um, extreme disagreement with this, every time I read things, what it always seems to boil down to is I think that this thing is better because it's majority white, and I don't want that to change. And that's like the most important thing. That's how I, it seems to read out to me that way. Okay, so that is one way that you might look at the, the way that I mean, obviously, you can take that from it, but that's really not the core argument. The core argument is... Okay, just so I'm not sitting here, re, you know, react anding, you expect people to react Andy. So if you want the original, go watch the original. I'm going to do some commentary. So JonTron opens with, with something that I find in, interesting is that JonTron opened being very charismatic. Hey, you know, you look good. You look better in person, et cetera, et cetera. We were talking shit talking. That's always that's already like a really disarming tactic to be friendly with somebody. And I like it. You know, it, p charismatic people will often be kind when they don't need to be. And so JonTron being charismatic out the gate is kind of cool. And by the way, this is like actually I think I've only watched like 20 minutes of this probably a few years ago. So this might as well be a first watch. Then the way that that this stream came to exist is Destiny was shit talking John Tron on Twitter onto stream. This was a classic Destiny move was to post really aggressive, really hyperbolic comments on Twitter, and then people would react to it, and then he would bait them into debating it online, and then as a result, he would get debate content. That's kind of the way that he his modus operandi was. I noticed him kind of get away from that one obviously when he was banned off of twitter but then two when people kept calling him out on the formula i think he i'm not maybe i'm reading too much into it but i think that he got sick of the formula because one it wasn't working as much as it had in the past and then two there was a shitload of people calling him out in the comments saying like hey you're just baiting for attention when you're gonna take a less hyperbolic stance in the debate so you know i'm sure that gets annoying after a while but uh framing the entire conversation we have brexit isolationism the uk uh, divorce from the EU, that was a big deal. Uh, they're still feeling those effects right now, economically and culturally and socially. Then the election of Trump, this is seven years ago. It's 2024 right now. So that puts this in the 2017 timeframe. So Trump, it, correct me if I'm wrong, he would have already been in office for two years or so. And so we would be in the swing of the right wing reaction and kind of like the cresting, I would say, of the dissident right reaction to the SJW wave in the 2010s. So that, that's kind of the framing of all this. John Tron said that centrism is cringe and that in general, oh, and then Destiny accused him of defending Western slash American culture. Destiny believes that this is a rhetorical shield to uh, cover for the fact that they just want a majority white country. So uh, that, that's where we're at so far. That's the framing. That's the summary of the arguments. I know it's very new, but let, let's continue.
is that no other nation would voluntarily change its demographics. Now, people say, oh, demographics, what do you mean? You know, this was, it's not a white country or something like that, or demographics don't matter. But the if this were true, they wouldn't have such an easy time turning around and identifying who's the problem, uh, you know, the quote unquote white male. <laughs> they so, have no problem identifying it then. It's I mean, well, then- in terms of the problem, I mean, I think it depends on what particular thing you're talking about. But I guess so to look at that first statement. So to, to kind of start this off, I'm not comparing us to any other country in the world. I think that the United States of America is relatively unique in its identity and that we don't really have um, and and we don't have like an ethnic background that is tied to our country. Does that make sense? As in like, we're not like, yeah, well, if you're from France, you can be French. If you're from Italian, if you're from Italy, you can be Italian, German, you can be German, Polish, Polish, like actual ancestry dating back hundreds and hundreds of years. Typically as Americans, we are, we are Eurocentric, right? In our ancestry. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's the USA is the proposition nation, but it, you know, the, the, it is a European nation. Historically, there's just no debating that when people try to debate that, yeah, there was obviously the slave, uh, population who is who lived here, uh, well, brought here against sure. their will. So they were emancipated. The, of course, the first yeah. thing that you just said doesn't really make sense. It was a European nation. Like in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, Italians and Irishmen were discriminated against, like massively coming to the United States. Like they were called, okay. I think Irish people were called the inside out Negroes. Like it was like. It, they, it, it, they're still European though. Yeah, but I'm saying that at, we didn't see it that way going back you know 150 years well, in the united no... states it's like well they're european they're okay like that's not how <laughs> we saw it like well we weren't there at that time i mean i was born in 1990 w- well past the i mean my dad is persian my mom is hungarian i'm not i'm not even 100 percent white i'm just saying this is a matter of fact so when i when i see bullshit I just know it. And well, what do you mean by matter of fact? What I'm saying is that as time has gone on, we've we've seen more and more people be included in the identity of what it means to be an American. So it seems strange that today there's like this massive pushback on what on who can become included in that demographic. That just seems kind of okay. Strange I understand. To me. I understand what you're saying. Well, none of this would have ever been a problem had the I guess you could call them the extreme left started bringing identity politics to the fore because when you have uh, a nation, a nation is is supposed to be a people that are all bound by at, at least culture, if not ge- genetics or whatever you want to say. So, um, you know, oh, we're no. all supposed to feel. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's going to be the things that. Uh, sometimes it's going to be not the things you say. It's going to be the things that are inferred from the things that you say. And like, by the way, like I, I don't want to do that necessarily. I would like to take the arguments on their face. So I, John Tron brings up an interesting point. And actually so far, he's not doing particularly bad. He's not like a Spurg or anything, at least not in my personal opinion. So the, he says, demographics don't matter except for when you're white. And so this, this is kind of like a misunderstanding. Uh, bear in mind, I was like an anti-social justice warrior for a while. And then, you know, I came into lefty academic circles. I do think that anti-white bigotry is covered in this concept, but just follow me logically here. I'm not saying this is correct. I'm just saying that this is what leftists, progressives will argue sometimes. They will say that whiteness is an expanding definition historically where it first started with like the Anglos and the Germans. But as America evolved and Europe evolved, whiteness started including more and more tribes that used to see themselves as disparate. And so what's happened is that this is a social construction. Social constructions do exist. They do affect the real world. That's one thing that I think lefties are so fucking stupid on. But at the end of the day, this is a series of definitions that we created that we can ultimately change. So when you identify as white, you identify as the in power group, the people who have controlled America and Europe for a majority of history and therefore have the most wealth based off of recent history. And as a result, when you tribally identify, you necessarily discriminate against people who are not white. So if you're talking about, you know, brown Asians like Vietnamese people, or if you're talking about Hispanics who you don't consider white because they're too dark, like uh, Mexicans or whatever, who are mestizo descent. If you're talking about African-Americans, or if you're talking about Africans, or if you're talking about people from the Middle East and North Africa, just through the creation of the definition, you're necessarily being, uh, you know, exclusive because definitions by definition need exclusions. So... Through that concept, you can be, this is where it's going to get a little bit lame. You can be an ally where you give up your whiteness as best you can and you stop identifying with that label so you can become egalitarian with the rest of humanity. 
Now, the problem with that is that it asks you to ignore fundamental reality that I am white. So if you took a, if you took a pixel, hold on, uh, you can't see my mouse cursor, but let's just say that you took like a, a pixel reader and you read like some of the pixels on my forehead, they would be white. Now, of course, there's going to be some pink and some brown and all that other stuff in there, but it's going to be fairly pale skin. So I am a part of European ancestry. White skin is a development of European ancestry. And as a result, when you're walking down the street, you can typically categorize people into different perspectives. And not only that, those demographics correlate not necessarily cause, but correlate with different behavioral outcomes for different populations. So when you're asking somebody to give up their whiteness, you're also expecting them to give up, you know, their understanding of definitional reality. But anyways, uh, John Tron says United States is a majority European country. Historically, that's accurate. Destiny does take an exception to this, and his exception is also accurate, but we'll get into that in a second. And it wouldn't have been a problem if the left hadn't made identity politics come to the fore, where you have intersectionality making that, you know, when you walk into a conversation, you go, as a gay, black, pan able-bodied man like when you start a set like a, a sentence like that it's like this like holy uh holy recitation of your identity so people can take your statements more seriously whereas if you say as a cis white man then people dismiss your shit now that being said um i think it's funny a lot of people don't like it when i lean into like lefty word games but i think it's hilarious to like flip these things on their head and i like to say as a cis white man and the reason being is because like they they say oh you're 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 showing your privilege it's like yeah fuck yeah i'm showing my privilege i'm cis i was i was born as a man i identify as a man i've never had gender incongruence i never doubted that i was a man it's fucking awesome it's great i am white meaning that i am of european stock now i'm a celt so i'm like a dirty european you know like i'm a i'm a not as civilized european but i'm still a, a white man which you know confers certain historical benefits and then i'm a man wait wait hold on white cis man yeah and then i'm a man so i i'm able to identify as a man in society and that obviously confers certain responsibilities but it also confers certain certain detriments so i think a lot of white people get pissed off because they're like oh you think that Oh, straight is missing. <laughs> nice. Uh, hold on. We'll get into straight in a second. The, but I, I think that a lot of people assume that just because you admit to your privilege, that's saying that you don't have any difficulty in life. And a lot of lefties act that way. Like if you see those fucked up tweets where they're like, this country was built for you. How are you homeless as a white person? So anyways, uh, the Mark Collette debate. Mark Collette is actually white. Well, we can we can do that later, Vlad. I can I can add it to the list. Basically, we're we're gonna go through all of uh, Destiny's debate history. Uh, yeah, and then straight. I always like women. I like boobs since I can remember. I like you know it, there there was no confusion there. Talking to Dylan Burns, what was really funny because I kind of realized something just by thinking a little bit, putting my thinking cap on. He, I asked him, when you walk into a room, when I walk into a room, I see women right? I see attractive women and I see ugly women. And then men, unless they look like they could physically kill me, they might as well be furniture. So, you know, if there, there's an excuse to be social, maybe I'll socialize with some men if they look like they could be funny or cool or interesting. But I basically, if, if it's not a social occasion, I don't see men. They, again, they might as well be a fucking desk or a chair unless they look like they could beat my fucking ass. And I asked Dylan, when you walk into a room, do you see men? Do you see like their butts and their legs and, you know, their faces and all that, their voice and all that kind of shit? And he's like, yeah, that's how I see them. And that made me understand being gay. Like, like they see men the way that I see women. And I just don't, I, I, I just, I don't process men that way. Therefore, very convenient for me. I am heterosexual, which is uh, very nice. Been sucking on. T <laughs> okay, can't finish that sentence. But let's continue. Uh, we're, we're we're cooking. Let's uh, let's get Destiny's rebuttals real quick, and then we'll keep moving. The United States has a unique history. Um, has a unique history, and he's saying that because the definition of who an American is has expanded over time. I agree with him, but if you don't concede, I feel I feel like it's dishonest if you don't concede that it's been majority European for the majority of its history. 
Then he brought up inter-European discrimination as a reason for why these definitions aren't accurate. This doesn't take away from John Tron's point, but it does add a level of nuance. And then he says, we've been expanding the definition of what it is to be an American for the past few hundred years. This is accurate, uh, but it, it it doesn't contradict what John Tron's saying. It expands it and adds a level of nuance, which I think is interesting because a lot of people act like this was a total blowout of John Tron. I'm not saying that it won't get rough later on, but so far he's doing okay. I too am a dirty white for the most part. The rest is English, so I kind of hate myself. True. Uh, it's okay. It's okay to be Anglo. Sees Long Tool, but didn't watch. And Texans, I don't think I've watched this since this first aired. Excellent. Well, welcome back. We're we're going to continue continue on with the React Andy slash breakdown. Still, um, like we're one people, but they started doing this thing where they were like, well, if you're black, you're here. If you're white, you're here. If you're, you know, they, okay, so they basically. That, that, so like, okay, so again, like I know these are a lot of like hot button talking points, but like when you say the left started identity politics by assigning white and black to certain areas, I would say that Jim Crow laws probably assigned white and black people to different areas more so than a Black Lives Matter speaker or Obama talking about a racial <laughs> issue. I don't agree with this narrative that all of a sudden the left has brought out, you know, identity politics. Like if you talk to minorities in the United States, identity politics has been part of their national identity for the past, you know, since the inception of the United States. I just don't know that. Well, I just don't know that it's on it's the true. same level, especially because well, it's not. It's on a much lesser level than it used to be. We don't you, have you, Jim Crow laws anymore. We don't you know, women's suffrage happened, you know, like, you're right. And people gross. still manage to create divisions between themselves Well, because there still exist divisions. Black people are disproportionately represented in prisons. Women are disproportionately represented in certain workplaces. OK, you know, but the argument is that it's white people who cause them to be in those places. That's the that's the implicit argument, not that they have any agency of their own to who have... do you think was responsible for jim crow laws well of course it was it was white people of course i'm not arguing sure. for jim crow <laughs> okay well no I'm, I'm, not, I'm just saying that when you say something like that like well people are blaming white people which is absurd well i mean if you go back 50 200 years yeah it was kind of white people that did it now i'm not saying that we need to lock Cringe. white people up now or bring back reparations or anything but it seems like the big problem and i notice this a lot because I, I watched pretty much your entire discussion with sargon is that right. um i know that <clears> there are extremists on the left that want to play the blame game and do that fucking white guilt bullshit i'm not into that shit i'm not that extreme um, you know, like white people need to, you know, bow their heads and, and be uh, solemn everywhere and recognize Based. their privilege all the time. Like, I think that's stupid. But it's difficult sometimes to have a conversation about these topics when a lot of white people won't even acknowledge that they exist. When you get white people that say things like, well, um, I, I'm pretty sure I could go through your Twitter and find things that are like reverse racism is a real thing. And, you know, white genocide exists today in America and everybody hates the white mm. man. Like those are pretty those are pretty charged statements when you have people that are alive today in their 60s who were legally discriminated against in their childhood like that's those are pretty extreme statements you know well if we are going to acknowledge one side well, this is always a one-sided thing because if you don't agree that whites are the primary cause of you know dysfunction in certain communities like it what it, it, it has to stem back to jim crow it has to stem back to slavery well i don't know that you know these arguments can hold up decade after decade so, so Jim I think Crow that's wasn't people... that long ago, though. Like when you say a statement like that, like that's an... okay. But there's people who are like 18 years old who are committing a disproportionate amount of crime, and they are uh, were born after me. So how do you explain that? Is that okay. Jim Crow? <laughs> how? Okay, Nobody how wants much... to get into the realistic things. They say you want to have a conversation, but they don't really want to have a conversation. They just want to blame whites more and more. And the more right, they... if you if you had a daughter that was eighteen years old, would you send her to hang out with four hundred guys that were all like known like fucking juggalos or people that rape people or whatever all the time? Would you would you have her hang out in that environment? Um, no, Probably not, not, right? If you had a friend and he had you know thirty friends that were meth heads, right? Would you be happy with him hanging out with all of these people constantly? Like, no, probably but I, not, right? But, but the, the argument I'm getting to is that your environment shapes you a lot, right? If you have a family that dates back, you know, hundreds of years, um, it, you know, if you've got parents that help you, parents that take care of you, like, these things have a major impact of your life. If you have grandparents that were directly impacted by Jim Crow, you have parents that were born to people that were directly, um, you know, discriminated against by the state, 
I mean, we're not that far removed from these okay. issues. It's not like, okay. well, my grandparents deal with this. Do we really have, like, we still deal with the Red okay. Scare in the West, you know? Okay, well, uh, the United Kingdom didn't have Jim Crow. Uh, France didn't have Jim Crow. We still have riots. We still have Muslim riots over there. And in Sweden, they didn't have Jim Crow. They're still... Uh, riots in the streets of Stockholm and Malmo and wherever else. Well, I, I, so you're I, I telling me that I'm just speaking. So specific... at what point do we is okay? So Jim Crow, one one aspect of it here in America, but as far as the rest of the Western world, we don't have these same precedents. And, okay. and there's so, on, just I only want to speak in those communities. I only want to speak in regards to the United States because everything else is way more complicated. You get into the histories of other countries and Islam and the in the Europe and everything. That's all different countries. Are, are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th this is um this is a good dif differentiation, uh, but I I do think that John Tron did pick at something real. So let's actually start with Destiny because I feel like I don't agree with him as much on this one. Uh, so so let's get into it. So I think he correctly argues. Hey, Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you, Hannah. Nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. You should do streams like this more often. Thank you kindly. I appreciate it. Um, so Jim Crow was a form of identity politics. So that that's just that's just true. As a matter of fact, we have to start with John Tron because Destiny does rebuttal arguments. Okay. So the one people narrative. The reason why I agree with John Tron that I think the one people narrative is good for the United States of America, that we should be raised to conceptualize ourselves as Americans. But I also think that it's a romantic notion of our country that doesn't necessarily bear out historically. So when you look at, there is a cool story of like a black slave who escaped the South and commandeered a Confederate gun runner vessel, made it up into the North and then became a Naval captain, served in the Union Army or Union Navy for a few years. It, I, I forget which branch he served in, but he served and then he retired and then he became a businessman and then he, re he retired rich right so that's a cool story and that's a black story that's a black man who escaped the worst situations in the united states of america and you know pulled himself up by the bootstraps and became wildly successful by the time he died and this, he died before 1900 so that that is an american story right but what's also true is while that person that exceptional person did a fantastic job becoming the kind of like legend and hero that we would hope to have in our country there are millions of other young people who did not succeed in a similar way and suffered fates that were not that great, right? So the one people narrative, I think you can bring up these heroes because these are the people that we aspire to, but society is oftentimes more complex and more fucked up than that. Uh, white people are being exclusively blamed for historic injustice. Um, I think that's accurate. I don't think that's what destiny is doing, but I do remember there being like social justice warriors at the time and still today, you can find them on Twitter who are doing that. It's very annoying. It's very cringe. It's basically like American exceptionalism or white exceptionalism, but in the inverse. So some people do white and American exceptionalism where they say that we can do no wrong because we're awesome and our history is awesome and we have the right principles and all that kind of bullshit. Well, they do that where we're uniquely evil, which I think is stupid if you look at the histories of any other people on the planet. Young people who commit crime who were not born into these systems. I think that this is a libertarian and conservative argument, which is basically saying that just because you are from downtrodden circumstances doesn't mean that you have to subscribe to the fate with which you are predicted to fall into, which I think is a good argument and is a good argument for two young people to say, just because society is fucked up doesn't mean that you have to be fucked up. Uh, finally, he points out that Arab Muslim riots are not based on the historical discrimination in the United States that stretches back into slavery. That's interesting, but I want to put a pin in that and then kind of come back to it. So Destiny rebuts, Jim Crow was identity politics. That's irrefutable. Literally laws based off of race are a form of identity politics. And the white power structure at the time or majority white power structure did put in discriminatory laws against like, you know, Chinese people and black people in the 19th and early 20th century. You can't really argue that that's not identity politics. It's just like we had this beautiful time in the 90s where identity politics wasn't as big. So it was cringe to kind of go back to it. But I also feel like that was a fluke of history as well. Uh, he says that BLM was less divisive than the civil rights movement. I think that's historically true. Identity politics is inherent to women in black identity because of historical injustice. Again, I think that's true. Uh, he's not personally into white guilt. I think that's saving him from being like a stereotypical blue haired SJW. I think that's part of his power is he doesn't like screech and like play into white self-flagellation. Uh, so it's good that he acknowledges that. 
Uh, he says that reverse racism and white genocide uh, being real is an extreme statement and John Tron acknowledging those things or talking about those things is showing that he's a fringe political entity. We can get into that when they actually get into it. Environment shapes your outcomes and uh, intergenerational wealth. He brings up like why that's important. So I'm not going to go too hard in this, but I would say the same way that you can go to black folk getting screwed over through slavery, you can go into Muslim Arab and European Christian slash European atheist antagonisms, and you can figure out why there's the antagonism. And part of that is going to be colonialism. But the truth is that the Arab Muslim thing is so much more interesting because up until the 19th century, and I would say it, it probably really like the 16th century, I would say, but even up through the 19th, Ottomans and Muslim caliphates were a peer player, if not a dominant force in Eurasian politics and warfare. So instead of it being like, you know, black people are slaves, therefore they're starting from the lowest social position. And then we have to deal with the struggle of trying to bring them up into like the working class and the middle class with Arabs and Muslims historically they were on top up until a few hundred years ago so that kind of like antagonism doesn't have the the paternalism of europeans looking down on muslims although you know occasionally they do muslims feel like they should be in charge arabs feel like they should be in charge so that that's kind of where some of that antagonism gets a, even a little bit more vicious i think in some ways than black and black and white antagonism in the americas i'm just going to check in on chat real quick because you guys are you, you guys are busy so i just kind of want to check it out um all the sjws in 2017 turned into tanky socialist hassan vosh supporters unfortunately true black people haven't made our country better uh, we can get into details i miss the 90s yeah me too i kind of i kind of like the non-identitarian liberal hegemony where we all get together in order to pull in the same direction. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people who don't want to pull in the same direction. So yeah, pretty sure Destiny wouldn't think that's so extreme now. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he would still laugh at like white genocide or whatever, but I still think that he would acknowledge more of the grievances of anti-social justice warriors considering how far insane left the lefties have gone. I wish Muslims could go back to <laughs> Jesus ain't speech. Relax. Holy shit. Uh, they haven't you cuck. Uh, don't know who you're talking to, but okay. What made you want to paint that dark green? Uh, it's kind of like a hunter color. So, so I kind of, I kind of wanted to make this like a, a man hunter cave. Yeah, you see the Arab should be in charge thing with some of the Israel discussion where they talk about how great it was for Jews under Muslim rule. Yeah, literally, literally exactly what I'm talking about. Hello there. Hope I'm not late. I brought waters and snacks based. All right. Yo, it's Greg's son. How you been? Great. How are you? I know a couple of Greg's, but if you're talking about Greg Desert, then, you know, 07. Parasocial love to your dad. He's, he's a good man. If it's a different Greg, then, you know, 07 to him as well. <laughs> expanding the voting base to da, 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 da. okay you guys are gonna you guys go have your race war in the comments section we're gonna continue on with the arguments all right that's all different countries and different topics so in the united states i'm not trying to say that no black person is ever responsible for any of their actions whatsoever i'm just saying that it bothers me sometimes when i listen to internet celebrities uh, get together and talk about how irresponsible black people are when so many of them are born to single parent no, no, households no, no, no. With... like it's 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 not as if we're it's not as if we're saying like all black people are irresponsible that's ridiculous i mean that that is truly mm. bigoted. i'm just saying like you, Interesting. You can't make the argument that whites should be okay with them being a minor, becoming a minority in the countries that their ancestors built, if it doesn't apply to other countries. When, oh, wait, what wait, country... wait, 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 we're getting way, way different. Hold on, white minority versus other countries. Okay, here, I'll write this down. We're we're not quite on that topic yet. Hold on. I'm just saying that if you're not acknowledging that there are problems that exist in these communities, you'll never be able to fix it, right? And the, one of the big problems I had when I talked with Sargon was this idea that, like, black people just need to fix themselves. Like, I mean, sure, you can say that, but this is going to take a lot longer to get these communities on board when they were aggravated by white communities for so long. You can't just tell a group of people that have been oppressed historically in the United States for hundreds of years, you know, over the course of a generation to just fix their shit. Like, it's not, it doesn't work that way. You know? I, I don't understand understand why it is 
anyone else's right. responsibility but their own. Do they not have agency? Ooh, that's libertarian why is it shit. Someone like why should someone else deal with these problems? I mean, that's basically what people are asking of this. Because we live in a civilization where we all help each other and we have yeah, to but exist recently, with one another. Recently, we haven't been acting that way, have we? So uh, the, no, the, the, recently we have been. We live in an unprecedented ooh. period of human history where more people than ever are surviving childbirth, um, less people than ever are dying in natural disaster, more people than ever are moving into middle classes all around the world. That's not true. We've absolutely been helping each other. And and the thing is, even if you're a selfish person this benefits you why are you moving to the united states and not staying in iran probably because there's more people doing well in the united states so there's more opportunity for Ooh. you here than there is in iran I like right? this. when the united states when everybody sure. in the u.s does better everybody does better right if black communities and mexican communities get more of course money, yeah, sure. of course so, well you're saying of course now but then earlier you're like well why should we help anybody else because you don't want to live no, in a shitty country with saying that's not what i'm saying i'm saying they're turning the 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 they're turning you know, the, the, everyone against each other. And so... Well, but you saying that, but it's like, it feels like... Hold on. Sanguine Entertainment said something that I don't agree with. He's saying... Uh, saying we're all Americans and worrying about white majority are not congruent views. You, ident you identify people based off of your group or you don't. So, so I think this is incorrect. So the identity American, if you want it to have, so we're all American citizens. We were, or at least all the people in the United States are who were born here, right? But... The United States requires no specific outlook on politics or religion as a part of its identity, maybe to its own peril. I think that people who identify with the term American, because there are American citizens who don't like the United States of America. Hassan Piker is the perfect example of this. People who follow Hassan Piker are perfect examples of this. Leftists who want to burn down the current government are perfect examples of this. So they might be American citizens, but they are not American in a definitional sense that I would care about. And so John Tron, uh, I think, would correctly ask, like, in inferencing, assuming that John Tron and I have the same perspective on this, is that if you don't work, take care of your family, pay your taxes, try not to be a burden on society, et cetera, et cetera, then you are, uh, you're a fucking problem and you're not part of my tribe. And one, one of the things that's interesting about this is John Tron got like, you know, basically called a Nazi and evil and all this kind of shit during the conversation. But he actually made kind of a, a nuanced point about his concern versus what he views as overt bigotry, which is when he mentioned he, he was inferentially okay we'd have to go back and check out the clip and i don't want to right now but he was saying that he wasn't okay with actual bigotry because if you have like middle class normie black folk who did pull themselves up by their bootstraps who do obey the law who do work hard who do pay their taxes who do care about their neighbors and all that kind of shit he's not going to be individually bigoted against that person because he doesn't you know he, he doesn't want to carry over his other judgments of issues into an individual relationship however um, he's saying that, or he did say, it's weird for whites, RE Europeans, to welcome their own minority status within their previously European majority countries, which I think is fine. Now, what's interesting is that Destiny says, you can't just bootstrap it. That's true. There's hundreds of years of history here that complicate the situation. That's true. He says, we live in a communitarian society, even though he doesn't use the word communitarian and we're responsible for each other. I subscribe to that belief, but I believe that libertarians wouldn't. And John Tron makes a libertarian argument. And he says that life has been getting better and better and better over the past few decades. So while we have this ro romantic view of the 90s and the 80s and the 70s and the 60s and all that kind of stuff, that romantic view is colored by the narratives we tell ourselves and not the actual facts on the ground. What John Tron rebuts with this is why is it why is it anybody else's responsibility? And I think that's interesting because because I often waffle between these two ideas. I'm a communitarian, meaning that I believe that society is the balance between the individual and the collective, and that I think that's an okay thing to be. And we can enforce laws based off of that conception, but the reason why I'm a communitarian and I engage with that concept actively is because I do think that I can have an impact on my surrounding world and make the world a better place. And I think that it's the responsibility of all good people to believe the same. John, but John Tron is basically like, as a libertarian, he doesn't say that, but that's the philosophy he's espousing. He's saying, 
I take care of myself. I take care of my own. Why the fuck is it my responsibility to clean up your shit? And I think that there can be a paternalism that comes from communitarianism where you're basically wiping people's asses for them instead of encouraging them to grow up. And I think that there has to be a balance between that because you can't be Captain Save-A-Ho out here saving everybody from all their fucking problems. At some point, you do have to encourage people to save themselves. And like, like as an expectation that I expect to save myself, I don't expect anybody to save me. So, so why am I being so paternalistic to other people when I don't even expect anybody else to bail me out necessarily? So, yeah. Oh, America is wunderbar unnecessarily. Uh, yeah. I came from the Captain Planet mentality. Me too. Me too. The good news is other than being dipshits or college campuses, most far left aren't willing to stake bodies, stack bodies, in the same way the far right is in the U.S. True. True, true, true. All right, let's move on. Good, good, good content. Let's continue. If you point out a problem, the right is so quick to go, well, hold on, you're turning us all like it. Well, no, we're just acknowledging a problem, and now we need to fix it. True. I would argue that... <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to get... I don't want to get too raunchy with this, but... Uh, I, I think what I'm saying is that it, it nobody would nobody would ask Japan um, if it was okay that uh, you know Japan become a minority Japanese okay, nation. But you know? we're not Japan, and I don't care about Japan. And also, Japan is one of the most racist fucking countries in the world. Do you want to be like racist. Japan? This word racist, what does it mean? It means I mean, that the Japanese people thought that they were the superior Asians, and it was part of the reasons why they were so keen to do that shit they did during World War II. Japanese viewed themselves as the superior Asian race and every other Asian as being subservient to them. I, it doesn't get much more racist than Japan. I you mean, want to try to draw a, a, a parallel to another homogenous society, Japan is like the worst go-to argument. It's also a dying country of people who, because they refuse to let anybody else in, are having horrible problems with their population. Who like Japan is a lot of like world record-setting suicide rates. Like I don't think Japan is the country that you want to point to uh, as a model homogenous I, society. I just disagree. I think it is a model society. I mean, b b in what way? See, look, it's it's happening now. I mean, what is it? What is it that's so offensive about white people saying they would like to preserve their demographic majority? I don't understand. It always gets into these semantics. Of because like, I don't have to understand help this why the, that person. Why does why is the skin color so important? And why would you drag the country down holding on to it? Like there have been. Well, I didn't start this shit. Now, did I? Well, there have been contributions by other people to our country that are non-white. Why at? wouldn't? Why wouldn't we want to continue to foster this kind of behavior? Why would you want to close everybody out and be like, white I only? Think, I think human beings are, at the core, tribal, and they tend to want to stick to their own. I don't. I think it's completely sure. natural, completely normal. And so, but any... you've already proven that statement wrong in what you're Hi. saying because you think you're a white person and you're half Iranian and what did you say, Hungarian? Yeah, I'm that wouldn't white. have been considered a white person a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, Irish wasn't considered a white person. I'm not talking person. about me. I'm talking about mass immigration. Like when, 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 when they want to basically, you know, I mean, they've gone and they've said it on the DNC. Uh, what was it? Like the the DNC platform. They had that lady that was saying, you know, white people need to shut up and. Listen, now that's the kind of discourse we're looking at for the future of this sure. country. So, I mean, that sounds kind of bad, but again, you have... I mean, <laughs> kind of bad. Well, I, to some, I mean, that's what I find myself saying to a lot of white people. When you've got white people saying things like, oh, racism isn't real, or reverse racism is the bigger crime, or minorities in America are totally fine, you guys just need to, like, damn, like, at some point, you got to chill out, and yeah, you have to listen to people and figure out what their problems are. So nah, nah, uh, nah, that's cringe. He's sweeping. He's sweeping. Sweeping. Uh, so, so hold on. Why is uh, why is skin color specifically so important if we're all American? Ask Endernax. He's in the chat. Don't ask me. I I th I think that we can have a Captain Planet society. Endernax disagrees. You you can argue with him. So uh, John Tron doesn't get want to get too raunchy. So that that's an interesting statement because obviously it implies that he has more. Uh, interesting things to say that he doesn't want to because, he, he, you know, it's the French guy, the French soccer coach who's like, I, I would like to say it, but I don't want to say it because I don't want to be in trouble, so I won't say it. So human beings are naturally tribal. This is correct. This is why I want to create a tribe of value, a tribe of virtue. It's actually interesting when um, Christian nationalists, 
Sorry, Andrew Nax, I'm going to pick on you a little bit. But it's interesting when uh, Christian nationalists or whatever will argue about like race realism and race essentialism or whatever, when that's not the tribe that Christ wanted to create, as far as I, I know, uh, you know, Christ was for the Gentiles. He was for everybody. And so as a result, it's a universalist tribe. So what should be driving Christian nationalism is the values of Christ. Um, I also think that, you know, I'm, I'm a Republican. I believe in a republic, a, a you know, a, a country based off of the rule of law and representative democracy and hopefully some military strength and some people who actually have spines. And so as a result, I would like civic virtue to be the the glue that holds us together. And I would like, you know, people people cringe at this, but I think that that is true. I think that in a liberal society, if you work hard, take care of your family, pay your taxes and take care of your community, that is all that's required. Now, if you want to do something more, like you want to join the military, become a law enforcement officer, become a teacher, serve the community, et cetera, et cetera, that's noble. And we should valorize those people. We should make those people our heroes, but we shouldn't require it of every individual citizen because the truth is we don't need every individual citizen to be some, you know, public saint, right? Uh, but we should require that bare minimum. And then if you're a plague on society, you do a shitload of drugs, you drag your neighbors down, you have poor relationships, you do a shitload of heroin, uh, you fuck everybody over, you fuck everybody over literally by giving them herpes and spreading diseases and all that kind of shit. We should judge those people based off of their actions and we should say, you are not a part of our tribe. Now, we're not going to kill you. We're not going to exile you. We're not going to make it so you're incapable of getting money in order to survive. However, you are not a part of our value set and therefore you're not a part of our tribe. So I would rather have a tribe based off of virtue rather than a tribe based off of skin color because I have met uh, people from various skin colors and ethnicities and races and religions and languages who shared civic virtue with me. So yeah, anyways. Uh, white people need to shut up and listen. Uh, that's cringe. It's always been cringe. You know, part of what's good about our society is our ability to express ourselves and have freedom of conscience and freedom of speech. Telling a, a group, whether they're dispossessed politically or whether or not they're in power politically, to shut up because of their position in the relative hierarchy is fucking cringe. Everybody should be able to offer their opinions, good or bad, and we should be able to debate them within, uh, quote unquote, the marketplace of ideas. So telling anybody that they can't participate based off of immutable characteristics is giga fucking cringe and ha the democrat party by pandering to that language set has probably done irreparable fucking harm to itself politically by pandering to that bullshit um destiny rebuts uh japan and and uh, there's a few more people who came in so i'm gonna explain what we're doing we're going back we're checking out the old school debates we're breaking down the arguments we're gonna write up a write-up so i can do a 15 to 20 minute summary of the debate and we're react anding for the sake of entertainment so Destiny says Japan is the most racist country in the world. It's kind of true. I, I've been to Japan. I, I stayed in Okinawa for two years. Uh, they, they get a little judgy about people who are not a part of their tribe. Uh, one of the things that he says that I disagree with is he's talking about like the population issues in Japan. Those are real. The retirement numbers don't work. The economic numbers don't work, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know if immigration is necessarily the solution to that. And on top of that, I don't know if GDP is the end all be all of whether or not a society is healthy and happy and vibrant. And so I think that Japan, we should do our thing. Japan should do their thing. And then we should compare notes in like a decade or two and see how we survived the demographic collapse that's coming. And if Japan automates and they're able to maintain like a functional, healthy, happy society where people feel like they have good buy-in and economic opportunity and social opportunity and sexual opportunity and all that kind of stuff, then maybe they're doing it better than us. And if we are doing it better than them, then we can compare notes and tell them to go our way. Uh, sounds kind of bad, just sounds like sweeping. So it, it feels like Destiny knows that that is giga cringe, but he's not... Uh, he's not willing to bite the bullet and rip it down. So anyways, I see uh, I see Endernax is here to uh, stir the pot. So I'm going to let y'all do that. And I am going to uh, continue the content. This, this is the problem. When you get condescending, people say, fuck you. I don't want to listen. And that's why you're seeing this big pushback. I didn't start it. And well, but this both whole sides thing, are I condescending. We can't, white. we can't pretend the condescension only comes from one side, right? Like Trump is literally no, it, the most it, it abrasive does, does political figure. Side. It does come from Origin of Logos. Why are you watching this old news? I explained it at the beginning of the show. I explained it just now again. We're breaking it down. We're getting the arguments. I'm going to create content too long didn't watch. And on top of that, what what what? You want me to 
What do you want me to talk about? You want me to go check out uh, Vosh Lollicon content? That's what you want me to do? You want me to go talk about JSTOC getting banned off of YouTube? Does that sound more exciting to you? Because it does not sound more exciting to me. So let's uh, let's do a debate retrospective. And if you don't enjoy it, you don't have to watch. On one side, Trump is a reaction to the retarded identity politics of the last... At You're talking about reaction years. to identity politics. Dog, half the people that were tweeting tweeting at me in response to what you were saying to me were literal Nazis and white supremacists, like linking Look, me man, it's this guilt by association shit. Why don't you denounce all the communists in your movement? They killed 100 Co million people. Wait, what's what is wrong communism? with communism? Is that what you just said? Wait, what does well, communism have to do with any of this? Well, what do Nazis have to do with this? The people, they, it's a political and, and race ideology. Communism is just an economic thing. Oh, it's an economic thing. Okay, Nazis were a, a, a movement in, in, the, in 1930s Germany. Uh -oh. They have absolutely nothing to do with any of this. Americans uh -oh. are the ones who beat the Nazis. So I don't know why we're bringing Nazis into anything. Because the people that were supporting <laughs> you identify as neo-Nazis. I don't care. Does, it, does someone replying to me uh, mean that I endorse them? Have I ever tweeted anything? anything of neo-nazi ideology no but I guess, I guess like the thing that bothers me is that at some point nice. if you find that you are in company with a ton of white supremacist racist people like at some point you got to wonder like fuck what the I mean, fuck am i talking about like no these are just slurs white supremacist racist and by the way this thing that i think i'm white so fine go ahead and take take the whiteness <laughs> away from me say I'm just an Uncle Tom, Middle Eastern. No, whatever. no, 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 hold on, hold on, no. I'm not trying to take the whiteness thing away from you. I think it's a beautiful thing. This is where we are at yeah. this, in 2017, a half Iranian is talking to me and feels like they belong to America. That's a good thing, dude. That's a positive thing. Because like I said, 150 years ago, so pe people identified as their European counterparts. Like, you're not American, you're German, you're Polish, right? It's these things, oh. you're uh, Italian, you're, you know, you know, British, like, but now we see ourselves as American. There's a ton no. of different white people in the United States that all see themselves as fucking white people. A lot of There's people couldn't clearly even- clearly people in America. If there is one, let me put it this way. If there is one American in America who doesn't see themselves, and they're a citizen, who doesn't see themselves as strictly American, we have ourselves a problem, in my opinion. Mm. Because, <laughs> and if, sure, if you want to move towards fixing that, that's fine. That's a great goal. Uh, I, and, I, and I don't think a pure society is possible. Like, I don't think that's possible. But in terms of a demographic majority, I, I don't know that a nation can exist without one. This truly multicultural, every single person is a different <laughs> like thing or race or religion. I don't really know if that's sustainable long term Wait, in a society. Why not? What's so wrong about people being well, around you? Well, have you seen the last you? four years, my friend? I feel like people like you, when they're talking about this, they just pretend they get you gaslight. You pretend that the last four to eight years didn't hold on, hold fucking on. happen. I'm not gaslighting. Your side sure is the gaslight. definition of gaslighting, dude. You're telling me that there are riots all over Europe and riots there all are. over Sweden. No, the they're dog. Fucking are. <laughs> they're not. Do you think Sweden is falling apart right now under mass rioting and burning yeah. down of go You ever heard of boiling the frog slowly? Doesn't notice. <laughs> I mean, people say I mean, the same a, about Trump's move towards an author authoritarian fascist government. I mean, I, you can make the same argument about anything. I, like I said, I mean, like the, the, I mean, the facts back me up that we are in an unprecedented era of world peace right now. But for some reason, people That's think about that to change. Really. Why? <laughs> Because shit's falling apart. But it's because... not. That's the, you're the one gaslighting now. Do you see? I'm the Trump one is the one gaslighting. This idea that crime is at a 45-year high, that ISIS represents a threat somehow to the Western world, these are gaslightings mm -hmm. by fucking Trump. These things. Okay. Uh. Sorry, I'm taking notes. Okay. So. This, um, there's points in here that we're just going to break down. Um, some of these things are correct. Some of these things really piss me off. So let, let's, let's just go for it. So Trump is a reaction to a decade of cringe id poll. Uh, that's what John Tron says. That's just fundamentally correct. I would say that a lot of people that I saw online who did vote for Trump in 2016 were doing it not because they thought that he was a 4D GS genius who was going to save the world, but just because they wanted to stick their finger in the eye of the political establishment and they thought it would be funny. So he is a bull in a china shop that, you know, the right wing and a bunch of distant right people, they effectively like slapped him on the ass in order to get him into the china shop. So that's true. Nazis are 1930s are a 1930s political organization. Uh, the reason why this is kind of like a, let's just say a, a yellow flag for me, 
the reason why it's a yellow flag for me is because during this era, distant right and alt right people, uh, people who actually do believe in you know white separation and you know white identitarianism and all that kind of stuff, what they would do is they would correctly, as an argumentative strategy, say that Nazism is the uh, Nazism is a historical, historically unique artifact of Germany. And that, you know, and then therefore they wanted the, the argument to be dropped. However, they still believe in a healthy chunk of the same things. So they're kind of denying their close association while philosophically being relatively proximate. So that feels like a little bit of a dodge to me. I'm not saying that it is anything. I'm just saying it's a yellow flag. Uh, guilt by association is cringe. That's true. Communists are in Destiny's uh, replies. This is something that Destiny is not passionate about and not aware of yet, but he will become more passionate about all the leftists and socialists and communists in his replies and comments in the future. So the fact that current baby Destiny is not pissed off about that is totally fine. We know how the story ends. Uh, primary identity should be American. This is based. So I, yeah, I, I think that if you're in the United States of America, we should come up with a civic identity and the primary identity should be American. And if your primary identity is not American, it means that we have civically failed and we need to figure out why uh, you're not identifying that way. John Tron says a pure society is not possible. That basically tells me that he's not actually interested in ethnic cleansing or genocide if he believes that opinion earnestly. European majority should be kept and don't know if society can survive it. What he's talking about, what he's worried about, whether or not you think it's uh, cringe or accurate, is balkanization. And this is, this is a throwback to the term Balkans, Balkans being the former Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia was a polyethnic, polyreligious state that was held together by a dictator by the name of Tito. And what happened was Tito ran a market socialist economy that was relatively successful. And according to his apologists, he did kill people, he did imprison people, he did do some authoritarian shit, but he wasn't like Stalin where he was like mass slaughtering people. He only killed people and did authoritarian shit when needed be. And as a result, he's pretty fondly remembered in the former Yugoslavia uh, area. But the problem was when Tito died, there wasn't somebody to unify that area. And there were the Croats, the Serbs, and the Bosniaks, I guess, the Muslim Bosniaks. And so what happened was the Serbs said, we want to maintain our power. We want to make sure that you guys still live under our thumb. The Croats said, fuck you. We're not going to live underneath you. We're going to go do our own thing. And we're going to create a state called Croatia. And then the Bosniaks, they didn't have enough political power or military power in order to do anything. So what the Serbs did is they said, well, this is all really ours. So they started conquering the surrounding territories and they started liquidating some Croat towns, but they absolutely liquidated uh, Muslim Bosniaks. And so as a result, this was like one of the largest mass slaughters in the European continent since World War II. And it was kind of a big deal because NATO and America intervened in that slaughter and stopped it. So yeah. Vlad the Kebabber says, how can you have a civic identity in America when one side doesn't even believe in the First and Second Amendment and wants to abort babies and make kids gay? Yeah, I would push those people out of my civic identity and then I would try to find all the fucking normies and bring them over to us. So anyways, um, so, so that's what John Tron is worried about. He's worried about balkanization, American balkanization. Now, here's the thing about it, though. The reason why this never really appealed to me is because in the Balkans, you actually had fairly geographic developed like cultural polities where the Croats and the Bosniaks and the Serbs, they all lived in largely thirds of the country. Hi, Endernax. Hello. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I, I viciously hate you uh, simping for uh, Nick Fuentes, but it's okay. I still, uh, still par parasocially love you, so it's okay. Anyways. Uh, let's get back into it. So a lot of people in the distant right were claiming that America was going to experience a similar level of balkanization where eventually we just slaughtered each other around racial lines. I don't see that as really a thing because honestly, we actually do have a decent amount of cross racial pollinization from a so socialization level. There are historically black, Hispanic and his uh, historically Hispanic and historically black neighborhoods, but 
us drawing up little neighborhoods with our guns and AR-15s and pickup trucks and then shooting each other based off of racial lines, I think is fucking retarded. So, yeah. Anyways, but a lot of dissident right people who don't touch grass, they think it's a possibility. There were riots in Europe. There were terrorist attacks in Europe. Boiling the frog slowly. So far, things I would say have relatively stabilized. Obviously, there's problems, but I would say they would, they're stabilized compared to what was in the middle 2010s. That's my vibe. Don't know about you guys. And then trend lines don't always result in catastrophe. So this is, um, this is something that bugged me about Lauren Southern's great replacement thing. So she had a graph, right? And the graph was basically like Muslim birth rates. And they were, because they were higher than European birth rates, what was going to happen was within a decade or two, all the Muslims were going to have 10 babies apiece. And as a result, the European population was going to be displaced and Europe was going to be a Muslim majority nation. Now, or, uh, you know, continent. And that that's still a possibility, right? But it's probably going to be an infinitely more slow cultural burn between the historical Europeans and the, histor and the recent immigrants. Because the truth is that a lot of people nativize and what i mean uh what i mean by that is that they start using condoms they have less children they start drinking alcohol they listen to music and i know these are all bad things i agree that these are you know bad things on an individual level however they do secularize and so thing is you know a few generations down the pipe you don't really have like giga jihadist Islamist warriors. Now those people do exist. I'm not saying they don't exist, but when you're talking to like a normally normie fucking Muslim who runs the, like the falafel stand up the block or whatever, he's not like a hardcore fucking jihadist. He's like, a he, he's like a fucking normie who takes care of his family and shit. So anyways, uh, even if I accepted the worst characterization of Nick, which I don't because he's a good guy, he'd still be a much better person than anyone on the left. As far as personal personal conduct, right? Uh, I, I would say that a lot of lefties in their personal lives conduct themselves in horrible ways. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I don't know about his... Uh, I don't know about his actual political prescriptions. But anyways, how do you know they aren't jihadists? Because if they were fucking jihadists, then we'd have a lot more jihad fucking attacks than we already do. And by the way, this is what pisses me off about Destiny. So so give me... Give me uh, a second, right? So... Destiny argues in a lame way, Nazis and white supremacists are in your comment section. He's kind of doing guilt by association, even if he's not consciously doing it, he is. It, he thinks that it's based that in 2017, a half Iranian identifies as American. I agree that that's based. Uh, also, but I do think it's funny because I think some Iranians identify with that like Indo-Aryan, you know, cross-European, they are the purest Aryan identity shit. So there could be some weird shit going on there. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying that that is something that's going on. So just because an Iranian identifies as, a, as an American doesn't necessarily mean anything. Destiny is right that ISIS and jihadist terrorist attacks at this time are not existential threats to the United States of America. But I also think it's really callous and fucked up and stupid to literally be watching terrorist attacks knocking out a few dozen to a few hundred people almost like monthly in 2016. I actually think this is part of the reason why Clinton or uh, why Clinton lost and Trump won. I think it's fucking stupid to literally see a jihadist attack every other fucking month and be like, yeah, this is normal. Yeah, this is fine. Like everything's totally fine. Like dude, I, Pulse nightclub is Pulse nightclub is still a memorial 20 minutes away from my house. There, there were fucking 50 gay people slaughtered 20 minutes away from my house. And it's like, what? I'm just supposed to, I'm just supposed to say, yeah, like every five to five to 10 years, you know, we, we just need to, we just need to accept this. And uh, what was interesting is, so I lived in Belgium uh, for a while. I lived in a country or I lived in a city called Overisa and we used to go to a, a local market and that local market was where my mom <laughs> bought let's just say secondhand goods from morally conspicuous Muslims who likely got it from burglaries, but it was very cheap. And my mom, uh, she's not Jewish, but she, she was raised around Jews. And so, you know, who can pass up a, who can pass up a deal, right? <laughs> and so, but that neighborhood is where the terrorist, terrorists came from who ended up doing the Bataclan attack. And so that's one place I've lived that is affected by jihadist terrorism. I was born in Concord, Massachusetts. You had the Boston Marathon bombing. So that's another place that I've lived 
that had a jihadist terrorist attack. I lived in San Diego, California. Now, that's not the same as L.A. I know it's a few hours apart or whatever, but you had the San Bernardino shooting. So I'm going to go ahead and count that. You have a third place that I've lived that had a jihadist terrorist attack. I live or you know, in Central Florida and you know, Pulse nightclub happened 20 minutes away from my house. So literally I've lived a dozen places and they've all been hit by a jihadist terrorist attack at one time or another. Now I understand that statistically the chances of me being involved in the jihadist terrorist attack are low, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that it's not real. It's not fucked up and it doesn't affect the community. Knowing that you can walk out into your fucking neighborhood and get gunned down or run over by a truck or fucking stabbed by some random fucking jihadi dickhead. It, it's bad. So just because it's not existential doesn't mean that it isn't fucked up. And just because it's statistically rare doesn't mean that you don't take it seriously, you know? So that's where um, Destiny's sociopathic callousness to violence, even on a small scale, is frustrating for me. Uh, because if, if I had to pick between falafel and jihadist terrorist attacks then i would obviously pick no falafel and no terrorist attacks but it is what it is i got a lot of cool muslim friends uh you know globalization is a fucking thing so it kind of is what it is so yes yeah back when call of duty actually had muslim bad guys true <laughs> all right let's move on things aren't true or, or I, will that, give you, I will give you that uh, perhaps it's it's a little bit on both sides there, but um, it, I still maintain what I say is true. And, you know, so like when I when I look at society in America today, um, 200 years ago, men and women would not have been seen as being able to do equal things. That would be a disgusting based. idea. A hundred years, 150 years ago, um, you know, Italians, Polish people, Irishmen wouldn't have been considered even white people, let alone Americans, right? I don't know. That, and, and then, that, that is just a myth. That's not true. They were considered white. I don't know where this thing that Italians and, and Irish weren't considered white. That's ridiculous. You seen the Irish are like the whitest swarthy. people around. The hell, that does, that's just a fucking myth. So I'm going to take that no. from you. Okay, I, here, here, here is a I'll quick, give you I can't read thing. the word. It's white N-word, okay? I can't read this because we're going to trouble on stream, okay? This is what Irishmen were called. Yeah, I mean, in the United States, do you, I don't know if you didn't think this. I need a little more proof than a, than a short Wikipedia article here. I mean, do you, Doctor Zayas? Uh, what do you, what do you want? I mean, we're they talking about an undisputed. They might have but they were still white. I, that's all I'm saying. They, they were no, not dude. They literally white. had that's signs ridiculous. in the United States that said Irish need not apply. These were less than humans. These people were treated horribly. They were not seen as Americans or even white people. They were called reverse Negroes. Maybe they were a bunch of dicks, huh? He's, no. Yeah. All right. So as an Irish person of Irish ethnic descent, okay, what's interesting about this. So I agree uh, with Destiny's assessment that Irish people and Italians were taken uh, badly. But as an example, there was a IRA commander who slept with a woman who had 12 children and murdered that woman. And when they talked about that woman, she was like a rabid alcoholic, a Catholic. She had 12 fucking kids and uh, she was like pro IRA. So like if you didn't have the highest YouTube opinion, won't let me call you a name that rhymes with Rick, but accept the super chat and just pretend. Thank you. Pondering politics. I appreciate you. Good to see you. Thank you for the dono. And your emperor looks like a shriveled ball sack. So uh, he's a big Star Wars fan for those of you who don't know. <laughs> Anyways, point being that uh oh also go check out my bolter video you might like it and if you want me to build you a science fiction weapon let me know and i'll do it so anyways so my point being that discrimination is bad generally speaking however there are certain demographics that engage in certain behavior irish being one of them that i would say in the 19th century we probably were alcoholics we probably did like to fight we probably did have a bunch of kids we probably were too catholic we probably were papists okay so if the Anglos said some rude and mean shit during the 19th century and the 20th century, I'm not saying it's justified. I'm just saying it's, uh, it's logical. Anyways. I don't think so. No. <laughs> I mean, okay. So 200 years ago, women weren't seen as being able to achieve the same thing as, as, as men Look, were. 150 being, years ago, well, Irish, Irish men and Italian being, weren't seen as being white people. 100 listen, years ago, listen, black people weren't seen as being, It seems like we're Irish, making... Being Irish or people not liking the Irish or people not liking the Italians 
doesn't make them not white. It just makes them not liked. I had perhaps they had some traits that were undesirable. I hear the Italian mafia made the rounds. But look, but that would have been a good argument to restrict Italian immigration then. Uh, but there, we didn't. It still and look stands. what happened. No, it they've integrated stands. into society. That's a good thing. Nobody in the United Italy States after, of America, nobody in the U.S. <laughs> sees an Rudy Italian. Giuliani took him down. Nobody in the I mean, U.S. Look. looks at Italians and goes, oh, you're Italian. You're not a real American. Look at all of the integration we've achieved so far. Why would we stop at this point when we've come so hmm? much farther than we ever thought oh, possible? Yeah. Because if it's not working, we should avert course. How is it, it not working? What's not it working? It appears there is a lot of conflict. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but in the last election, they pitted non-whites against whites, and they expected the non-whites <laughs> to vote for Hillary, or you were some sort of race traitor. And uh, I don't know if you want to ignore that fact. That's fine, but that's how it was. Well, I mean, it's kind of based on their platforms. You've got somebody like Trump saying that if you have Mexican parents, you can't be a federal judge. I mean, that's a pretty racially Did he charged— say that? I don't, it, I don't know if he said that. I don't recall he, Trump ever saying anything explicitly racist. I, I, I recall that he said that he wanted <laughs> I, immigrant, uh, elite— Yo, I'm, I'm still listening to the debate or whatever, but it's funny that we have a lot of, like, anti-Italian racism going on in chat. <laughs> nice. Legal immigrants from Mexico who committed crimes to go back. That's... He also said that a lot of the, the people that Mexico sends over here, they send rapists and murderers and maybe some are good people. I mean, was he wrong about the fact that we get a lot of crime from Mexico? Was he wrong about that? For the most part, yeah. I don't think that the majority of illegal immigrants are murderers mm -hmm. or rapists. There's okay, no well, data to if, back that up. So, yes, some he was wrong. Are, if any some of, of them, them are, are, some of white people are murderers and racists. Should we deport okay, all but... white people? Yes, but those well, we should are deport the rapists and the murderers, are, right? They're part of, if you want to call, you know, they're part of the American family. We 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 can't do anything about them. But why would we import crime? Why would we do that? It doesn't make sense. We're not talking. But apparently, about if you oppose crime. this, you're racist. We're not talking about importing crime. The fact that you have importing crime as synonymous with Mexicans coming to the United States is a little it has telling, don't to you do think? With Mexicans. If a bunch of Hungarians came in here committing crime, I would say the fucking same thing, man. <laughs> okay, if you saying that it has nothing to do with them being Mexicans, then why is it so important that whites remain the majority in the United States? What is it about being white that's so important? Look, I'm I, I'm mm. actually not making the argument that whites should remain the majority in the United States. I'm simply arguing that it's clear that whites are not allowed to speak up against their demographic um oblivion i mean it's not you know, oblivion there is no oblivion nobody is walking around killing all okay, the white people says you says you i'm says sorry you. wait did i miss the stories where all of these white people are being killed in hordes by mexicans and black people they're not being killed man but they're being displaced i mean if you what you do you would, mean by displaced you, you are the same guy who says that europeans Displace the Native Americans. That's your argument. That's your go-to argument. Oh, you're not a Native American, then you can never be a true American. But apparently, when other people do it to white Americans, it's okay because fuck white people. Wait, That's no, it's, I, it's obvious what you're saying. No, my original point. Was Hold on. So I, I don't know if that's from an earlier argument, but I have not heard Destiny say that so far. And while I think John Tron is correct in saying that in public, especially in 2016, 2017, you weren't allowed to talk about uh, demographic replacement. You weren't allowed to talk about demographic shifts. You weren't talking about, allowed to talk about mass immigration. Or if you were, like, like if you did, because you, you could, and obviously we had Stefan Molyneux, we had Lauren Southern, we had a few other people who did. Uh, you could, you had to be like, you had to walk on eggshells. You had to be really careful with your words or else you were risking social media bans. It's just true. So now that Twitter or X, uh, it's fucking Twitter, right? Has been bought by Elon Musk. It's kind of like a resurgence of the dissident right and their schools of thought and all that kind of stuff. And I think that normalized the dissident right back into the conversation. However, uh, I think that at the time this was true but i think that destiny is correct to ask what do you mean oblivion what do you mean displacement because if you're talking about if you're talking about it right like i have uh, a hispanic neighbor right uh they my wife is gonna laugh if she ever hears this i have a hispanic neighbor who moved into a really nice neighborhood uh, he painted his house, you know, a crazy fucking neon blue color. He plays music on Saturday afternoons, super loud. He grills in his front yard. 
And on occasion, his family gets into, you know, loud arguments that, you know, you can hear from the street. Okay. I am not being killed. I am not being run out of my neighborhood. I am not, I don't have so many Mexicans around me that like, I can't, you know, function. I can still get in my job. I can still get to my job. I can work my job. I can pay my bills. My life is still pretty stinking good. If I don't want to hear the music, I can close my door. If I don't want to look at his house, then I can not look at his house. I'm not being killed, right? So oblivion doesn't apply and displacement doesn't apply. So I think Destiny is correct to ask those follow-up questions, which I want to let them get into. Is there a cow head in the pot of soup? I don't know if they're that Mexican, but you know, I'll... the the food. Do... My wife is commenting the smooth. The food does smell good, so they have that going for them. Let's continue. It was that I think it's strange that so many people identify as American when your family typically immigrated from another country. I never spoke Everybody's to whether or not from fucking somewhere, man. It doesn't make. It, it doesn't make these things not real. Like, well, sure, but I kind of agree. The British saying, people every... immigrated onto the island at one point uh, before there was anything there. I mean, what is your point? You, you, nothing. That's good. You made my point for me. I agree that where you're from doesn't define who you are. That anybody can go to a country and be yeah, part of, of that country. Of so, course, so then, why are we so worried man, about white displacement? Point. Because it's real. Uh, do you want me to send you a a, a, a link? Would you would you hear? What, like, what does white displacement mean? Uh, it mean here. Have a look at this <laughs> this chart here. That's what it looks like. Hold on, Christian Valeris actually really bring, it brings up a good argument. God forbid if we ever get lots of immigrants who have ugly women and shit food. <laughs> yeah, then we can get upset. You show that on the stream if you'd like to. They're going to be. I mean, at this rate, you know, it'd be well, the whites would be a minority by twenty forty two. Okay, but what I'm asking is, why does it matter if a certain skin color is a minority? Because you would. People, you and people of your ilk would freak out had the situation been flipped. Had the situation been whites colonizing a part of when the Chinese did Wait, it to we're Tibet. not colonizing anything. These are people legally immigrating, okay, legally so belonging. Why, when, why would Some the Chinese, uh, you know, were trying to colonize Tibet uh, or whatever it was, you know, trying to go into Tibet? Why was that, uh, you know, a save Tibet situation? But when I don't know anything. People... I don't know about the situation in Tibet and China. I'm talking about the United States of America. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well. Okay, so I'm sorry for pausing. I shouldn't be pausing any in here. I should let them get into the content. However, I do think that this is something that's going to bear out repeatedly. Is Destiny says that he wasn't a huge history buff. And I'm happy that in recent content, he has been trying to shore that up by actually reading history books and all that kind of stuff. But this was absolutely a rhetorical weakness on his part where he couldn't understand what people were pointing to as geopolitical analogies because he was unfamiliar with it. Now, rhetorically, he was able to fight on the ground that he had established, which I think is is a talent, but in a way it's kind of slippery because, you know, he's not fighting on the ground that they're trying to lay out. And for a lot of people who study geopolitics, I don't want to say all of this is common knowledge, but it's relatively speaking common knowledge. So if you want to talk about Tibet, like broad strokes, right? Tibet was an autonomous region on the west side of China. The Han Chinese are different ethnically than the Tibetan Chinese. The Han Chinese came in, they took over, they put them under the CCP. The Tibetans didn't like it. There were some protests in the 70s and 80s that were repressed violently, and some Tibetan monks set themselves on fire as a result, right? Those are the broad strokes. That's not even me knowing anything. That's just like the... the uh, situation as I understand it from like a bird's eye view only having read like a total of like five paragraphs about it right but within that knowledge gap I can I could already rebut John Tron by saying that Mexicans are not coming here as a political entity they're not coming as a part of the Mexican government. They're not trying to impose some Latin American government onto us. They're not trying to reform our language or our culture or our education system or our governmental systems. They are coming here largely to, uh, some people would say assimilate is a bad word, at least integrate. And what I mean by that is assimilation, would they they become effectively Northern European, normie, white bread weirdos? Whereas integration, I would say they retain a healthy chunk of their personality while still incorporating themselves into society in a way that's functional. So I think that, that if Destiny had a cursory knowledge of China and Tibet, he would have been able to rebut that fairly quickly 
And so when he isn't willing to fight on historical grounds, it kind of makes me feel like he's a little bit he's a little bit weak in that area and he should improve in that. But we all have our flaws and our faults, right? So. Oh, OK, let's continue. Well, I'm using and I'm using a metaphor. What do you call it? Analogy. Allegory, metaphor. Analogy. Yep. And I mean, sorry, geez, I'm dumb. Uh, I'm using an analogy to try to, you know, give a parallel situation so you can see the hypocrisy. Wait, what is the hypocrisy? I, wait, I don't care about other country standards. I'm not concerned with them. There is no hypocrisy well, between saying Japan can be racist and America can't because I'm American and I have my American beliefs and ideas. Japan has other beliefs and ideas. I understand okay, that. I would never go to yeah, Japan and weak. tell them to change the way their country works. It's their country. Okay, let me ask you something. Um, do you consider colon the, the European colonization of Africa to be a bad thing? Yeah, that's a very, very complicated... It's, all, it's only complicated the answer is because yes. it's white... That's no, it's not. Reason. It's really complicated because in a lot of ways, Africa's uh, been exploited by um, different imperialist uh, countries. And in another way, in other ways, Africa has grown a lot in different economies because of their trade with these countries. Like, that's a Ooh. really, really complicated question. Africa is still lagging behind a lot of the world for a lot of different reasons, but they have been catching up and making great progress over the past 20 years. Like, it has nothing to do with skin color or white people. I mean, you could look at it through that paradigm if you want, but, but that's a really complicated issue. Ooh, can you? That was good. Yo, can we give old Stevie some props? Like I was just commenting on how he didn't know anything about uh, about history. And like, if you look at 19th century European colonization of Africa and also like the, the slave trade and all that kind of stuff, almost every historical person would have been like, it was really disruptive. It was really destructive. It killed a shitload of people. It spread disease. You know, it, it exploited raw resources while not returning much wealth to the local areas, et cetera, et cetera. But then maybe he's using the wrong terms and the wrong uh, historical examples. But he does say that like, oh yeah, there's economic benefits to European African relations, which is kind of true. So uh, I would say uh, he he stumbled into the correct answer, and I really liked it. So so for for being somebody who says that he's not strong on history, that was a decent answer. I'm just saying, if white people go to South Africa, they colonize there. Uh, you know, it's it's the white people encroaching on the Africans' land, and they should give it back. But we're not talking about colonizing or imperializing. And I, and I, we're I don't think uh, in the I don't think what Destiny would call, say that. What do you call a large number of people from one specific place coming in, setting up their own ethnic uh, enclaves, and then waving their own flag inside of our nation? What, what is would you call setting that? up your own ethnic enclaves and waving your own flag? I'm pretty sure we have a lot of Mexicans that come to the United States that are living in the United States that wave American flags and are proud to be American. Like yes, of course there are some, but not. There are also large swaths of them who don't feel that way, who want to okay. break parts of America off back into Mexico. So what would you say to those? Okay, so just to put your argument on paper, you think that there are people that risk rape, murder, and theft, leaving and fleeing Mexico to come to the United States, whose ultimate goal is to secede part of the United States back to the place that they fleed from. Yeah. I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? You think that there are people that risk rape, murder, and theft to try to get their families from Mexico to the United States so that ultimately they could get back to the United States just to secede part of it to Mexico. They want to break it off and go back to the land Look, that they... Man, I'm not going to speculate on why they did what. All I know is what they are doing. And... Whoa, whoa, whoa. You just speculated, though. You said that they wanted to... No, I didn't speculate. To... You said they I wanted to come here and break that. off... You know... Where are these <laughs> movements of Mexicans trying to get, what, Texas to go back to Mexico? What? <laughs> When you, when you have these illegals coming up and getting so bold to say, try deporting me, Trump, you know, that's a sign of a problem. By the way, it's inarguable that <laughs> the locations from where people have uh, immigrated it has changed. Uh, up until, I believe it was 1965, it was all Europeans. And now um, most of it is from Mexico. And by the way, you know, they're even going into, I believe, the African-Americans areas and pushing them out too so it's not just white americans that are offended affected by this kind of thing i'm not so affected I'm just... i don't understand what you this is what i'm trying to get back to the original question what do you mean by affected what's so bad about a certain type of people immigrating to a country like uh, back to the original question why does it matter if white people become the minority in the united states why is that a big deal <laughs> man come on <laughs> come on man i mean look it you got to answer it shouldn't matter that's that, that's how people work that's how all No, it's not. Operate. That's not true. Maybe that's how racists work. This is where the oh, word comes I'm a from. Well, I'm, I'm a trying racist. to figure out I'm trying to 
get you to tell me what, because that's all I can go on right now, because you're not giving me more. I'm asking you, why does it matter if white people are the minority in the United States? And you keep like kind of laughing and go like, well, huh, is it because brown people are worse than white people? No, or? of course it's not because brown people are worse. It's, it's a matter of integration. It, 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 mm. it, if they immigrate, they need to integrate. But also, we don't need to take immigrants from incompatible places. It doesn't make any sense. But that's from... the beautiful thing about America, dog. There is no incompatible place that people uh... can't. Oh, my God. Okay, well, I mean, if that's. I mean, we're the most diverse country on the planet, dude. Like, you can't argue with that. <laughs> we're also arguably the most successful country on the planet, at least in terms of overall size of the economy, although we definitely uh... have problems. We are definitely the most influential country on the planet. I mean, when we are the most... Okay, this perspective is stupid to me. Uh, I'm happy I don't have to have Destiny in the room so he can't, he can't talk over me on it because that, that's a frustrating answer. So uh, let, let's go over the points and then I'll, I'll expand on it, okay? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we already said that John Tron said that white people aren't allowed to talk about demographic shifts. We're not allowed to talk about becoming a minority over time, et cetera, et cetera. That was true, especially at that time. There are people who create ethnic enclaves and they shouldn't be able to. This is true. So I live in Florida and there are Hispanic ethnic enclaves, even within the city of Orlando, where you can go and there are generations of people who are from Cuba, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, et cetera. They only speak Spanish. That's fucking crazy. Some of these people have been here like 30 or 40 years. And the reason why it's crazy, like, listen, I'm happy they were able to get a driver's license. I'm happy they were able to work. I'm happy they were able to pay their bills. I'm happy they were able to do this, that, the other. But a healthy chunk of American law enforcement do speak English and they don't speak Spanish. And so when you interact with these people, if you don't know, I was a former law enforcement officer. When you interact with these people and it's a traffic stop or it's a domestic battery or it's God forbid a homicide investigation or whatever, when you have a language barrier and you aren't able to bridge past it, even with Spanglish or even with like, uh, uh, you know, like you, you have to call in a translator or whatever, that that is fucking stupid. So I would view it, I would in, I would personally indict somebody who moves to a country and does not learn the host country's language. When I moved to Belgium, I was there for three, three going on four years, I learned French. I went to French school. I spoke French on a day-to-day -day basis. I could interact with the locals. And I think that anyone, anyone from any country could find obnoxious, arrogant people from a different country who moved there and never decided to learn the language as fucking cringe. Okay? So, uh, yeah, that, that's fucking cringe and should not be permitted. We should, th th this is my personal opinion, we should have an official language. And I think it should, you know, if we end up, if it ends up being Spanish, that's fine. I think English is really cool. I think it has a lot of utility. I think it has a lot of innovation. Because English is four languages wearing a trench coat, you can always create new slang. You can always create new words. And a lot of other like romantic languages, they tend to have structure that kind of, I would say, limits linguistic innovation. And so I would want the official language to be English, but I, you know, if it ended up being Spanish, I would, I wouldn't care too much. Reason being is that this is actually what happened to Rome in their empire. So the Western half of the Roman empire spoke Latin and the Eastern half of the empire spoke Greek. And what happened was Greek was such an innovative language that a majority of the Western Roman empire learned Greek as well, because it was such a strong and powerful and versatile descriptive language that it ended up having more utility than Latin. And so uh, I, yeah, I, I just, I think uh, English is similar in, in that it has a, a lot of utility. Anyways, one of the things that's really funny, I can see this guy's face because when uh, when John Tron said, try deporting me, Trump, there, there's a Hispanic guy who's actually flicking off the camera and he's wearing a, a t-shirt that I think says deport me, Trump. It was one of those like cringe, like it wasn't BuzzFeed, but it might as well have been BuzzFeed videos. And what was funny is that that guy did get deported. So what's funny is John Tron was complaining about progressives being obnoxious in their propaganda and then that obnoxious propaganda ended up getting its dick kicked in. So I think that's pretty funny in retrospect. And then I was thinking that John Tron needs to answer why does the United States need to remain a majority European, like Euro European heritage country? 
And if I was answering on behalf of the Christian na nationalist or Nick Fuentes, what I would say is that Europeans historically built this country, that Europeans have a shared set of values that stretches back 3,000 years. It's basically uh, Greco-Roman history along with Christianity common law and English common law that that history has created some of the foundations for our republic and our civic governance. And as a result, we need to be able to perpetuate that system into uh, the future because we do think it's a good system and it's based off of a few thousand years of wisdom. So hypothetically, the United States of America has 320 million people. If we actually just took destiny, now I might be straw manning him, but you know, indulge me in the straw man. If we took destiny's hypothetical, where we just allowed anybody in at any time because we were so certain that our culture was going to be prevalent, then I think China has like 1.1 billion people. They could literally send like 100 million people and they wouldn't blink an eye. And they could have a quarter of our voting block overnight. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen, okay? Just follow me for the hypothetical. And so... If you had the CCP literally fly over, let, let's just say they fly over 300 million or 400 million, just to fuck with us. And we take them in arms wide open and then they vote in Xi Jinping as like the new communist dictatorship. Based off of Destiny's like logic in here, it's obviously taken to an extreme, but you would kind of have to accept that, right? So, so that, that's kind of where it's like, well, no, civilization does need guardrails and it does need some level of protection. And if you value that history, then it's worthy of protection. And if you see people who are not honoring that history and honoring that charity and honoring those economic systems, then you need to discriminate against those people, not based off of skin color, but based off of civic virtue. So, yeah. Yeah, China is doing that to Australia. Yeah, I mean, I'm taking that information from Vlad the Kebabber, but still, I, I agree that China has an outsized influence in Australia. And um, same thing with, you know, Hispanic civilization. If there are things that Latin America does that we don't like, and then we take all of Latin America overnight into the United States, then you can expect Latin America to replicate itself in the northern United States. And a lot of people don't want that, including me. So yeah, reminds me of the Red Scare. Well, you might be in the wrong place because I hate communists. So, you know, I think the Red Scare should have gone harder. Good luck with that. <laughs> All right, let's go. It's diverse country on the planet. Like these are inarguable. Why are you laughing? Like, oh, well, are we really? Like, no, it's like, you're acting like we're like 99% majority whites. And now we've got like a little bit bogging us down. Like that's absolutely not true. Like the country was something like 92% white in 1950. It's changed now. It's about 60% non-Hispanic white, I believe. Uh, these yeah. are epic demographic changes, unlike what I don't know if it's ever been seen in history, maybe in some invasion in the 1500s. But look, uh, these people see themselves, I'm assuming, as Mexican. I don't know that they come here and the soil magically turns them into Thomas Jefferson's direct descendant. So why is it that white people, especially white Americans, resisting their own displacement is racist? Because you're it's talking about racist. displacement. I'm trying to figure out what the displacement is. Nobody is killing white people. Nobody is moving white people out. It's a soft displacement. Dude, come when okay, and when they become the majority, they will vote in their own interests. They won't vote in white Americans' interests. So what white is a white have American? A legitimate yeah, hate. so what this is isn't uh, this isn't true. At least we're we're seeing the shifts already. So Hispan So what what's going to happen is white America, Northern European, non-Hispanic uh, Europeans are always going to be a power block inside the United States. And what's happening is we're seeing conservative relationships between Muslim conservatives, which let's face it, Muslims were our biggest concern at this point because of jihadist terrorism and uh hispanic conservatives who are overlooking hispanic immigration like hard hispanic immigration stuff because they've been here for a few generations they got their citizenship they got their ability to make money so they don't give a fuck anymore and so as a result you see hispanic and uh arab muslim conservatives making inroads into the republican party now i'm not saying that the republican party is ready to go like full big tent multi-ethnic you know racial kumbaya party or whatever but i almost feel like they would be better off for doing so because the truth is while on an economic level 
there are like a healthy chunk of redistributive uh, economic people within the Arab Muslim and, and Hispanic conservative communities. There is also a lot of agreement between white social conservatives, Hispanic social conservatives, and uh, Muslim social conservatives. So acting like these tribes, they can be disparate, they can maintain their own identities, but acting like they are always gonna go Democrat, uh, I think is incorrect and is gradually changing over time. Now, maybe I'm being a little bit too, uh, a little bit too optimistic, but uh, I, I saw some, I saw some right-wingers from various tribes coming together in recent times, so yeah. White American interest. Can you give me an example of like white American legislation or white American? My friend, there is a clear divide in the way that people think. White people tend towards the libertarian side of things, and the the at least the first generation Mexicans vote heavily in Wait, in terms how do of white people? Handouts if that and, was and... true, then why are red states the one that leech all of the federal money? Then if 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 red people believe I don't know Republicans... that that's true. Yeah, with with this stat too. So I'm not saying that red states don't have a shitload of welfare. Uh, however, I would say that red states do have a shitload of like rural military bases and road projects. I would want to see these numbers accounted for without military bases and without major infrastructure projects for development. So, yeah, uh, you know, th this is a talking point. I would like to see it more nuanced. I'm not going to Google it myself because I'm lazy, but yeah. Uh yes, I agree with you, Grey Jedi, that John Tron is a little bit too aggressive in his assertions because he's blackpilled. He was on the internet for too long. That's what's going on. Let me uh let me write down some some talking points. Most most of that why is whites becoming a minority a bad thing? They they're kind of still circling around why is whites becoming a minority a bad thing, and they're kind of answering that question. So I'm actually not gonna write down any more notes. Let's uh let's keep moving. True. It is true. It's absolutely I don't know if that true. Fact is, well, if that fact is true, I need to look into it. I don't know about that. Do you think that like a country like, or do you, I'm sorry, do you think that a state like California is taking more federal aid than it's giving back in taxes? Red states absolutely leech money off of the federal budget, and blue states are typically the ones that contribute to it. And even within red states, blue cities are typically the ones contributing the vast majority of the budget and the money compared to the red rural areas. So I, so I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, is that, um, is, it, is it because of what Indy Prime I, said, where it's like the... The farmers under subsidy are growing all the fucking food for all the fucking urbanite dickbags. Yeah, that's a I would like to add that factor in there as well. State, is it that leeches? Uh, are you talking about the southern states or something like this? Sure. Probably. Yeah. The, the, the red states, typically the Alabama is the, <clears throat> the Louisiana is um, the. I mean, these states have high non-white populations that I think I believe. I mean, I don't want to get into. I don't want to. <laughs> well, well, just well, look at what you're saying. You're saying these states have high non-white populations. Yeah. Then why do they I vote believe, Republican? I, I thought they... you said these people have voted Democrat. I mean, Louisiana does for they sure. Do. Okay, so they've got, but they've got enough non-white people to vote, but they vote Republican. That are, I believe, those states have a lot on welfare, but I, I don't, I don't know this for sure, so I don't want to. I don't really know about this one. I'm, I, I'm just, I will defer this one to you. I don't know. Okay, but then you but, said earlier that most of the Republicans <laughs> were libertarians or whatever. I don't know. That just seems like a strange... No, no, no. no. We, we see a different voting pattern. At least, look, look, look. Even if, it, even if it doesn't have to do with race, even if it doesn't have to do with national origin, uh, even if it didn't have to do with these things, we see a discrepancy in the voting patterns between the different groups in America. So when you see that, you see that it becomes stacked against the majority population who is discouraged from voting in their own interests. Wait, discouraged. what does that mean? I'm trying to figure out what Every does it mean? Bro, what, what does it mean to, to vote against your own interests? What are white interests that get voted against? <laughs> I don't know what reality you're living in, man. I mean, when... Yeah, when... So, so he needs to he needs to bite down on a bullet because he keeps like laughing and then dancing around on it. But you, you need to answer that question. So if, if if he says, so so let's just let's just take John Tron's presumed world world because you have to follow to its logical conclusion, right? So what he's saying is people are inherently tribal. I agree. I think that there's in groups and out groups. I would like our groups to be based off of tribe, uh, like uh, civic virtue. Other people prefer different things. He's saying that people default to racial and ethnic tribalism. That can be true to a certain degree. And he's saying that white people are taught to not think of themselves as white or they're, they're taught to think of themselves as American. Therefore, they do not, uh, they are like culturally propagandized in order to not advocate in their racial interest. However, Hispanics and black people and women 
they they are almost exclusively talked to about politics through the lens of their identity. And as a result, they tend to vote in their demographic interest. So if you're going to say that, the logical the logical conclusion is that there is a unified white, predominantly male political interest. And you have to be able to articulate what that is without laughing about it. Otherwise, Destiny's correct to call you a fucking racist because you're you're leading up to the edge of ethno-nationalism or ethno-political tribalism, and then you're not biting down on the bullet and saying what those ethno-political interests are. And when the news is telling you that a vote for Donald Trump is a racist vote, okay, and Donald Trump, all that he's saying is perhaps... Um, maybe we should keep America Wait, the way it was. So I, well, first, that's because that's an incredibly stupid statement to make. Most of what okay, Donald Trump says. Okay, says you. Well, okay, when you say make America great again, what time period are you referring to that you would want to return America to? Look, I don't think that this is a, this is a really silly question. I mean, well, wait—you just I, said he wants to make America great again. He wants to go back no, no, to keeping no, no, America no, no, great. No, no, what no, time no, period no, are you talking no. about? I said preserve. I didn't say go back. Wait, preserve as it is now? Because I thought you said there weren't enough white people now. Or do you mean like just exactly right now? You we're said at... that. I didn't say that. You I never said that said whites any... were becoming a minority. You said that it wasn't. They good. are becoming a minority. So listen, if the people, if the people, can't integrate. In, and, and, and feel as if they're all one people and truly, by the way, uh, now this whole melting pot thing, um, that would require that they, you know, become part of the, the greater whole and don't form enclaves because then you get balkanization. You don't get this See? utopian melting pot. So, yeah, but in the United States, it seems like we we've done a pretty good I'm, job of melting a lot of different cultures together, no? Um, some it's it's it could have been worse <laughs> but I'm, it's not perfect i mean and... i can go down the street and i can eat 50 different million types of food i can turn on my radio and hear music from 50 million different types of culture i could turn on the tv and see 50 million different things i'm sure that if i walk around my house i've got things built in mexico built in china you're talking to me on a computer so you've got you know innovation from california that has a lot of east asian workers in the tech field working there that have shipped their parts over from china who probably drive to work on cars built from parts that are shipped in from mexico like i mean what what do you mean it doesn't work? Like I don't. What, what, where is the? Where? What are you seeing? I'm trying to get your. I'm trying to understand your worldview. Like what are you watching that's showing that like America is falling apart and all these people are killing themselves and murdering white people and everything is going to shit? Like what are you seeing that shows you My this? My friend, I, 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 I don't know that you. I feel like these are words you're putting in my mouth. I never. Well, said no, I'm white just. People. I'm trying to understand. There is. Like there where is, is it? Absolute. From? There is an absolute uh, disproportionate amount of crime. Um, uh, committed committed to whites by non-whites. That's um, there's no arguing that. That's just FBI statistics. So in that sense, you could say, well, why shouldn't the white people be able to address this? But they're not allowed to because okay. they're called racist by if people. If you like wanted you. to fix crime in the United States, the best way to do it would be to deport all of the poor people because poor whites commit a lot of crime too, disproportionately compared to wealthier whites. That's just not true. But okay, wait, you can hold on. Say wait, 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 wait. You don't think that? You don't think that? <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Well, yes, yes. Okay. In 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 relative, in relative, uh, in relative terms, to, yes. In, in relative to uh, wealthy whites, yes. Sure. You're correct. Okay, so do you think that poor blacks probably commit more crime relative to wealthier black people? Wealthy, bl uh, they do. Wealthy blacks also commit more crime than poor whites. That's a fact. Wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> look it up. <laughs> Yeah, y'all just want to let that flow? We'll let it flow. Give me a sec, I gotta get water. Does anybody have a, a, a source for that? Fuck. When people make extreme claims, I don't even know how to... <laughs> Fuck. It's true, man. I, I've never heard that in my life, dude. I've never seen that ever posted. I'll, I'll have to look for it later. Um, I see an article written that says poor white kids are less likely to go to prison than rich black kids, but I'm pretty sure okay, this is... Okay, says who? That's just some conjecture. I mean, what you just said that, was conjecture. That, that implies that the, the court system is somehow racist. The, the court, court system, system disproportionately, even when controlling for socioeconomic factors, sentences black people typically for harsher sentences compared to white people, even when you control for the crimes. Yeah, that's absolutely true. You're, you're saying... I mean, this is just ridiculous. That they, they're going to uh -huh. sentence... I just, I don't subscribe to that. I, I mean, that, I mean, this that, is that, a, that's the whole. Hold on. Like, you can't just say like, oh, well, I don't believe that.
that that doesn't work as an argument so anyways let's go over it so th this is actually pretty interesting because we haven't covered a lot of ground i feel like it's largely because john tron waffled so he just he won't bite bullets he'll keep going after descriptive claim descriptive claim descriptive claim but he won't do anything prescriptive so he said disproportionate crime against whites why can't whites address it if you're gonna say some shit like that you have to fucking follow it up with what you mean because so for instance I would love to address disproportionate crime against white folk. Uh, however, the way that I think that you do it is that if we're, l l follow me on my logic chain, okay? I'm Irish, right? Ethnically. I am descended from rebels, bog people who fought the English for thousands of years, right? And so within the past 200 years, I was put into the United States of America, which is one of the most materially wealthy countries on the planet. And I had decent access to education and my parents raised me right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. As a result, I was able to attain decent academic achievements. And I like to think that I have a decent IQ. I tested for it, probably took some brain damage since I tested for it, but you know, I'm relatively doing okay, right? So let's follow that. I am the person who in history most other people would have dismissed as not being a value to society. But I am a value to society, so that causes a contradiction. So if human beings all have inherent worth, and if I myself am a contradiction to the previous perspectives of other people, that means that there is potential in every demographic to be developed into a healthy, functioning, happy resource for the community as a whole. And so... If we look at the demographics that are suffering that also seem to disproportionately commit crime or disproportionately have all these negative effects, Native Americans pop into mind, Black people pop into mind, Hispanic people a little bit, but they're doing better than the others. Asians are doing well. They don't need any help. Then why wouldn't we solve every other factor except for the immutable? Why wouldn't we have good schools? Why wouldn't we have good nutrition? Why wouldn't we have good job opportunity? Why wouldn't we try to create a civic culture around shared value? That way we can reduce all this tribal, racial, and ethnic conflict so everybody can realize their potential. That is a way that whites, as a tribalist racial group, could address disproportionate crime against whites is by solving what the leftists would call the material conditions. Another way that white people could solve the disproportionate crime against whites is they could do ethnic enclaves enforced through violence in which they move to, they create states that are exclusively for Northern European, non, non Hispanic Europeans. And then they could enforce by violence exclusion of all blacks and all Hispanics. That is something that could be done. I'm not saying that it should be done, I'm saying that it could be done. That is something that some people of John Tron's uh, dissident right friend network, the people who are spreading the memes and information to him, they probably believe that is the solution. So if you're going to lead it up logically to this cliff, you're going to have to say which way you're going to jump off of the cliff. So anyways, so, so yeah, you, you have to answer that question. He keeps going up to the precipice and then not answering it. Do genetics shape behavior or intelligence? Of course. Of course they do. So, yeah. And, and, and here's the thing. Th this is my personal theory. Not, not a lot of people are going to like it or subscribe to it. However, I would say that if you look at it demographically, the two smartest populations on the planet are Jews and they're the Chinese, right? Asians. And what is the way or what, what are like the two most famous things about these cultures? They were some of the first literate cultures on the planet. They have written histories that stretch back thousands of years. And when you look at Europeans and you look at their development, the written language was only propagated within the past 500 years. And so I would say that reading, imagining things, uh, economic and cultural developments that coincide with reading and literacy and all that kind of stuff i would say that those i'm not saying they cause and i'm not saying they're the unique variable but they likely correlate with an increase in iq being able to think abstractly and problem solve for things that aren't real that is a large chunk of iq so you need to so if they're if they're and also on top of that if you look at it like black folk in the 19th century were 
prohibited from reading. We're prohibited from literacy. So if you have a population that has only a hundred years of mixed like educational enforcement versus cultures that have 500 years or a thousand years or 3000 years of enforced educational enforcement, then, you know, it's, co it's at minimum correlative, if not causative. So anyways, let, let's, uh, let's move past my evolutionary psychology, race realist bullshit. The court system is, is biased, is racist. That's the same thing. So, so let me ask you this. So on one end, you're saying race doesn't matter. On the other end, you're saying race does matter. So which is it? People like you can never, you can never say because you just want, you just want to. Wait, hold on. I'm saying on, that it would be nice if race didn't matter. Is it been essentially my entire argument? Okay, you're but the, it would be nice if a lot of things were. Okay, you're the one making True. the argument that. I had a fucking billion dollars. You're the one making the argument that race is literally paramount, that it is the most important thing. And it's not the most important thing, but why is it so bad for what. You're acting like. They, they... Yeah, so th this is something that Nick, Nick Fuentes says, of course, is race is not everything, but it's not nothing. And I think that's one of the mistakes that lefties and liberals and progressives make when they're debating characters such as this, is that they presume that they have like a Machiavellian Nazi level, ethnocide level of, uh, you know, intent, when realistically a healthy chunk of these people are like race realists who want to live in segregated neighborhoods. That That's pretty much it. Like even, even Richard Spencer, I think, if you asked him, and this was like 2016, 2018 timeframe, I think if you asked him like what whites should do, he said that they should be allowed to self-identify as white, as a political bloc. They should advocate in their own interest and they should live in ethnic enclaves. So even Richard Spencer, the the most like virulent and famous of the new wave of distant right alt right thinkers he would not pump now maybe privately he would say some other wild shit maybe he would advocate for like ethnocide in private but in public he would he would just talk about like uh, racial separation so so that that's where for me presuming a machiavellian hitler level ethnocide policy versus they're just racist the way everybody was racist 80 years ago and they want to live in their own little lily white suburbs and they want to be able to like discriminate based off of race that you know that's more likely i think now there, there's probably a few just like the nazis there's probably some real nazis uh but i would say that they're probably statistically more rare than the race realist ethno separatists continuing white people would just want to you know purge the lands or something it's not true just why no, when i'm not they... talking about i'm just the, back to my question that i keep trying to get an answer i just don't understand why it's so bad if white people become a minority why is that such a horrible thing what? nobody wants to become a minority in their own country man why, no... why does it matter i don't consider myself because a minority it, because I i'm mean, an american and everyone around me is an american why does it matter if they're white or brown or black well that's not <laughs> I, I don't yeah, he's got to stop. I don't think that's He's got to stop laughing and he's got to own something. I don't know how to answer this. Like, it blows my mind. Why is it bad? Why is it bad on, on the flip side? Why is it bad if they remain a majority? Like, wh why? Because you're talking about excluding potential labor, uh, I am potential not talking talent. about excluding. When you talk about keeping whites the majority, the only way that you're doing that is by what? Barring immigration from people that are brown? Is it? That's the only so, way you would do it, right? Uh, no. Um, look. Or how else would you do it then? I mean, so. Basically, you're saying that it, it sounds like you you think the end game is that whites should become a minority. No, I think that the end game is let people do what the fuck they want. We keep letting people immigrate. I mean, whatever. So whatever why happens. you see you are constantly projecting this um, ideology of nonstop immigration from, say, the third world? What if Americans of any color, by the way, not just white? I should. I should specify, it's not just white people that feel this way. You think a Mexican who comes from Mexico probably wants to move to America, not move back to Mexico. You understand? Sure. So it, it's in literally everyone's best interest. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. 
Wait, I don't understand that the sequitur. What do, what do you mean? A person well, from Mexico wants to. What I'm saying is, let's just say uh, that um, we uh, admit a Mexican immigrant to the country. Now, does that Mexican immigrant? He's probably leaving Mexico because he he wants to move to America, which is, in his eyes, probably a better country. Let's admit. Um, but if swaths of illegal immigrants pour across the border. We can't do anything um, about it under pain of being called racists. When that, when that Mexican immigrant steps back, steps into America and sees that nothing's changed because the Mexicans have brought their Mexican culture with them, he says, what the heck? What did I, what did I spend three years trying to get you know, my, my citizenship for this? Or what, I don't know how it works. So is the argument that Mexicans immigrating to the United States are going to turn it into Mexico? Yeah, pretty, yes. <laughs> if they were happy with Mexico, why would they come to the United States? Because the better handouts? <laughs> a lot of them are on, on welfare, you understand. Have you ever in your entire life drove through a neighborhood where there are construction crews working or where you see people outside working? If you were to talk to anybody in manual labor, you would never hear the argument passed around that Mexicans life are lazy and a neighborhood welfare. where they do some Sorry. of the toughest jobs available in this country. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude, you're just virtue signal. Hey guys, I'm going to I'm going to ask for something real quick. So, uh if you have money, obviously, like, share, subscribe, donate, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm actually going to link the... Going to do a little bit of a shill here. I'm going to link the Indiegogo. Uh, because I am trying to do fundraising so I can get a CNC machine so I can make more functional props like knives and muzzle brakes and all that kind of stuff for the you know science fiction weapons project. Um, it's under the name The Counter Armory. I'll share the link momentarily. Um, however, um, also, if you just want to do a super chat, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you want to become a member, become a member. Also, if you just want to like the stream, that would also be appreciated. So I checked it a second ago. We were at 26 likes on YouTube. There's roughly 50 people inside the chat right now. So if those of you who have not like the stream, if you could do that, so it bumps it in the algorithm, we get another few dozen people in here, hopefully one of them's rich and they just give me a shitload of money in order to make science fiction weapons, that would be uh, based. So my shill is over, let's uh, continue with the content. Signaling, Man, I get How it. How am I Not virtue Mexicans... signaling? What are you talking about? Not all Mexicans are, are gonna go on welfare, I understand that, but a lot of them are going to commit crimes. Uh, go, some, this El Salvadorians are gonna create the MS-13 gangs. What about these guys, huh? You just wanna let these guys walk over the border? Sure, and white people can do it too. That's why you have law enforcement. That's why you they have- sure, They sure do, but their crime rates appear to be lower, and I don't know for But that's what... not true. Immigration isn't even a predictor of crime in the United States. Things like e level of education, whether or not you're in a single parent household, um, your socioeconomic position, these are all much greater indicators of crime than than whether or not you're an immigrant. Like, why not uh, uh, work on these uh, things rather than say, well, no immigration because some of them are criminals. Like, that just seems silly. Why would you hurt your entire country doing that? What What I'm saying is, okay, your argument is, oh, by the way, a lot of these people come to make money, send it back, and then go back. That's just true. So uh, they have no long-term investment in this country, even though, you know, apparently. Thank you, Remy LeBeau, for the four bucks. Lemon character blowing a big red heart. I have no idea what that means, but thank you. We like to think of ourselves as the 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 all amazing first world United States, but a lot of them d do have the interest just to come here for what money they can make or get and then take it back. But that aside, <clears throat> uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh shit, what was the last thing you said? Um, I, I don't understand if you just want to like block off all Mexicans from coming to the United States or... No, no, no. What I'm saying is the argument here is that we need an influx of immigrants because if we don't, you know, the white American, they always say this, the white Americans, they do the jobs the white Americans don't want to do. That's not true. Um, they just get pushed out because the, the, the they, they flood the job market and they're. Okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we have learned that this is true, that white Americans will not take on the agricultural jobs of the Hispanics. So what happened during COVID is a shitload of people got sick, a shitload of businesses were shut down, immigrants were deprioritized as far as like getting paid, basically. So a healthy chunk of them actually moved back to Mexico. And we had a labor shortage in agriculture that led to the increase in prices of groceries, meat, 
you know, uh, the legumes, vegetables, fruits, all that kind of stuff. And the agricultural companies, you can believe them or not believe them, but they were saying that like, hey, us getting the pro like the produce out of the fields before it rots is so important that we will pay 15 to $20 an hour for local people to work the fields. And they could not get people to do the fucking job. Because the truth is, who wants to go pick fucking apples in the goddamn sun for eight hours for 15 or 20 bucks an hour when you can sit on dick or Twitch and YouTube and make, you know, I, I think I've only made 20 or 30 bucks tonight, but you can still make 30 bucks for what? Hanging out with your friends and bullshitting over old debates. You can make YouTube videos about things that are cool, that are fun and interesting to you. And you can make a few thousand bucks. You can get a remote job working on a, on a laptop. Yeah. Uh, so one of my, uh, one of my consigliaries, Rye FD, he's saying, I can make more money waiting tables. Yeah, why, why wouldn't you go hang out with cute girls at a restaurant and run food back and forth from the kitchen to the to the uh, people making 15 to 30 bucks an hour? Why, why would you go sweat your ass off in the fucking sun picking, picking tomatoes and apples and all that bullshit? So, <laughs> Al Ram says, I worked the fields for you fatties during the pandemic. Thank me. Everybody salute Al Ram. I want to see some 07s in chat. I'm not moving on until I see some 07s in YouTube chat for Al Ram picking picking our food. So <laughs> I'm not I'm not talking about anything else until I see an 07. Somebody needs to salute Al Ram. Somebody do it. There we go. Thank you, Chase T. Appreciate you. All right, excellent. Um, if I'm gonna read another comment. If you actually sit on dick, you can make a lot more, just some business advice. Lol JK. No, it's true. It's true. Uh, our country weirdly rewards you for jobs that are not necessarily labor intensive. It's it's interesting. The current population of Latin America is 669 million people in 33 nations. Displacement of Latin America, not Hispanics, is mostly of five nations. Well, you know, my thank you for all the salutes. Al Ram, I hope you feel loved because there's literally like two dozen salutes. <laughs> <laughs> nice um but yeah i mean my solution would be to create the greater united states of the americas like we should have a southern united states of america which is basically brazil argentina chile all that stuff we should have a central united states of america which would be like you know mexico belize all those countries in there nicaragua el salvador maybe and then i think i, I don't know colombia should either be in central or south i haven't decided yet and then we should have the northern united states of america and then together we should form the greater united states of the americas and that should be a single political entity so yeah there absolutely were tons of produce rotting in the fields during the pandemic which was disturbing yeah straight up yes if we include canada 100 percent. why not oh man yes okay all right sorry i got distracted by chat you guys are typing very funny things i'm enjoying it but let me continue for the sake of people who are not typing in chat willing to work for less um because it's it's a higher standard compared to where they came from uh and they they they, they lower the you okay know, hold on the... do you consider yourself a libertarian do you believe in the free market and all of that uh I, I wouldn't consider myself a libertarian but i think some of their ideas are good like, which ideas? Do you think that, like, free market and all of that is a good thing? Of course, but I don't think all people are interested in the free market. <laughs> okay, so then why are True. you so opposed to expanding the pool of uh, the pool of the, the supply of labor to companies in the United States? I don't understand. You're talking well, yeah, about you bringing want... in workers to the United States to help grow the overall economy, right? Well, I don't understand how this is a bad thing, are you, like, from an economic point of view. Is that the argument you're making? I'm saying that when you bring in a bunch of workers who are willing to work for less— you're going to lower the standards of the entire uh, the living standards of the entire country and this but argument that's not that... how living standards work if you bring Excuse in me? people that are willing to work for less okay that means that the supply of the the um of the cost that goes into making the product is dropped as well the 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 cost of goods or whatever so you can also sell products for cheaper as well it's why we get cheap shit from china and mexico and whatnot if you brought in a bunch of um, of cheap Im uh, cheap immigrant labor to to create some product then the cost of that product will get cheaper no doesn't that help increase the standards of living as well yeah you can sell out your society for a quick buck if that's what you're saying yeah no but there's it's not a, so things... if you want to buy an iphone for three thousand dollars look i don't I don't think mass consumerism is the answer to our problems. It's obviously... So you think lowering the standard of living for everybody is the answer to our problems? We should make everything no. more expensive again? No, I don't think... It's it's not that. It's just that 
I, I think that there is something to be said for preserving a culture, g giving a nation a continuity. Bye, JST. Everybody say goodbye to JST. He's going to get dinner. Continuity. The, these well, wait, these are legitimate. Yeah, but we have that. We're American. That's our continuity. That's our culture. It has nothing to do with being majority white. You can say that, but these days, what the Confederate flag has been banned. You, they they they're burning American flags in the streets. I I don't know. It's it's a changing nation, and and I I do think that you know immigration policies that haven't been the smartest are partly to blame for that. I guess, like, I just don't understand how you think that, like, being white is such an important part of being an American when you're I don't! Hungarian I'm not even fully fucking white! Then why are you so worried about whites not being a, a minority in the United <laughs> States or whatever? It's a principle! What's a, why, if, why is it bad that they remain a majority, then? Because I've already said why, because you're talking about restricting immigration from a... Yeah, 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 yeah. So th this is, um... This is a mistake. You gotta you gotta track your opponent's arguments, and obviously, I'm I'm getting a little tired, so I'm having difficulty tracking right now. But 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 but, uh, Destiny, John trying to ask the question: What makes it so bad for Europeans to remain the majority in the United States of America? And Destiny had an argument that was effectively economic. He was saying that, well. We're free marketeers. We want people to make stuff for a cheap price. We want economic migrants that come here in order to be productive. We want to make sure that we're improving the market and expanding it at all times in order for us to continue to grow and thrive as a society. And the proof is in the pudding in reference to the material goods and the wealth of the United States of America. Uh, those are compelling arguments for neoliberals and globes and all that kind of stuff. But it does feel like very hollow to people who are like religious or socially conservative, because the truth is that like, we love our goods. I love lights. I love my computer. I love being able to talk to you guys. I love the internet, all that kind of stuff. But I do derive more value from things like family, social bonds, community, uh, gainful employment, being able to pay my bills, which requires a decent wage, um, you know, being able to take care of my family, all that kind of stuff. So when you say like, oh, well, you got a, you know, you got an iPhone for cheap and you got a cheap TV and you're able to eat avocados. It's like, that's not really like a compelling answer for somebody who isn't a materialist or a hedonist. So, uh, you know, that's not necessarily compelling, but I'm going to summarize their arguments real quick because I did write them down. JonTron is not biting bullets. It's frustrating. Um, re he's repeated this multiple times, but Destiny is not hearing him or is willfully ignoring him. We don't know. Race is not everything, but it's not nothing. That's what JonTron has said multiple times. He's saying it doesn't matter specifically the race of the people. He wants to keep a, a, a European majority so the culture remains the same so you don't create a third world nation through importation of mass immigration. Uh, and he's saying your end game would be whites being a minority. That was one of John Tron's comments. Destiny's rebuttal is that the proof is in the pudding that he doesn't see an American collapse. He doesn't see an American cultural collapse. He definitely doesn't see it in the economics or his local community. Uh, he celebrates the fact that he's able to get a shitload of different kinds of food. He celebrates the fact that he's able to enjoy a shitload of different kinds of music. He celebrates the fact that he's able to enjoy a shitload of different kinds of people. Lord knows he likes to fuck a lot. Um, uh, so, and he keeps asking why is race the most important thing John Tron rebuts with it's not. So he says, no, my goal is for people to do what they want and for race to no longer matter. For a 90s liberal, and I would say for neolibs in the 10s and 20s, I would say that this is a perfectly fine answer. So he doesn't want to ignore the problems that come from different demographic groups. He just wants to solve it with the free market and materialism. And then he wants race to no longer matter in a few decades. And that is an okay answer from his worldview. So yeah, um, I think somebody, what is the crux of the debate all over the place? So if I had to boil down this, cause I agree with you, they are skipping all over the place. And I think we're probably gonna go to an hour. And uh, so we got 15 minutes left. And you and I will probably be hanging out for another 30 minutes or so, but I will try to be back tomorrow night. Um, We'll, we'll we'll do this debate in portions. We'll do the first half tonight. We'll do the second half tomorrow. So the crux of the argument is John Tron is saying that white people and Europeans are not capable of advocating in their own pseudo-ethnic, pseudo-cultural self-interest, and that it is okay to want to maintain a majority European uh, population in the United States 
in order to make sure that the culture continues. Now, that being said, he hasn't articulated what that culture is very specifically. And whenever he kind of gets nailed down on something, he kind of jumps around and laughs nervously. Destiny, on the other hand, is saying the world is not falling apart. Mass immigration has not destroyed us. A majority of immigrants are productive members of society. He is a free marketeer, so he doesn't see the downsides of immigration. And he thinks that the problems that come with demographic difference can be solved through liberalism, economics, education, policy, etc. So he doesn't see these uh, these challenges as existential. So that that's the, the crux of the debate so far. Then let me just answer. I see an at counterpoint, so let me answer that before we move on. When someone doesn't bite a bullet, do you think it's logical to assume there is a bullet, aka they don't answer because it, it'll sound bad? I think one or the other, right? One, they legitimately don't have an answer. I think that happens. Like, like people just haven't thought through their perspective. So when you ask them to elaborate, they refuse to do so because they actually don't have the next step in their thought process. That happens all the time. So I don't want to assign to malice what could be explained by incompetence. However, the nervous laughter followed by, come on, dude, you're gaslighting me and also assigning positions to destiny and all that kind of stuff instead of just answering the question. Like there are very few questions that I won't answer. The reason why I answer all the questions is because one, I think your conduct in public should be the same as, as it is in private. I think you should be a consistent human being in all spaces of your life whenever possible. One of my favorite quotes is Mark Twain, where he says that uh, I never lie. That way I don't have to remember anything. I think that's a fantastic quote. I try to live by that as much as possible. Um, and then also, I think that your conscience should be guided by, yeah, sure, your own principles, but it should be in concert with those around you in your community and all that kind of stuff. And therefore, you should be willing to share your public positions or you should be willing to share almost all of your positions with everybody at all times. Um, so yeah, I'm like a very public person in that regard. So if you have some like secret nefarious agenda, it's probably because there's something wrong with your agenda. But at the same time, he doesn't know what those interests are or how to accomplish them. Yep. That's where uh, that's where I was thinking that uh, he might not have an answer legitimately. Uh, chat died for me. I still have good bars, but I don't see any new chats. Can somebody type in a new comment? That way I know chat's alive. Otherwise, I need to, in the next five or ten seconds, I need to reload my chat. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. We'll continue with the content. I will reload the doc on chat. Up. Oh. Hey, never mind. Thank you ton of different areas in order to why not some... why do we have to take immigration from all these areas because it helps why? grow the size of the economy and it brings talent in from other areas to continue to benefit the entire country <laughs> it benefits the global elites that's the only people it benefits Dude, it doesn't you benefit. are like you make like millions of dollars making youtube videos you don't count as a global elite <laughs> what are you what are you talking are you like the working man now what the 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 average middle lower class citizen has benefited more from globalization than any other person poor people have cell phones with amazing technology in them because they're manufactured in china everybody in the United States can afford a car because we get cheap uh, we get cheap manufacturing from Mexico like uh, wh what do you mean the global elites are causing immigration like I, that's that's your defense no I'm just saying I don't see how this by the way look we're, we're, we're arguing in gigantic generalizations I understand that I'm putting we so can argue specifics about anything if you want I mean I, I know all the specifics no 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 that's not the... that's not what I'm saying is like of course there's going to be some real standout immigrants from these places. I'm just talking about the principle of not being displaced. But you still haven't explained to me the principle. Why is it so bad that white people become the minority? I don't understand the principle. They Why is should... it so bad? Listen. Listen. That this is just not how it, th this would be an easy answer. I know that I'm looking at this 7 years after the fact, but he could say when you import too much of the third world too quickly, you become the third world. Boom. You don't have to make it like crazy racist. You don't have to individually indict Muslims or individually indict Mexicans. You can just say too much immigration, too fast, can fuck with the fabric of society, and you can import a bunch of bad behaviors that you don't want to implement. Boom. Bull bullet bitten. Things work in reality. Like What does that mean? <laughs> what it means is that what it means is that people are are tribal. If you look at Yugoslavia, that's a nation of uh, of all was a nation of all white people. And it balkanized and it broke up in a, in a horrific war of sorts into 
What is it? I'm Croatia? not talking about the Balkans. I'm talking about the United States of America. Go to Las Vegas. Go to any place with a ton of people, a big city. You'll find people of different races, of different religions, working together, coexisting together perfectly peacefully. Like, you're acting like this never happens, and it's, like, inevitable that some massive civil war will always break out. It seems like the only way it would happen is if everybody believed what you believed, and that you have to keep majority white status, otherwise, like, shit is going to go to hell. I don't understand. Listen, listen. Even though the, the, the mantra has... <laughs> I mean, you're just arguing based off the old paradigm, which is that if you I'm don't arguing repeat, based on historical data. I don't think you're arguing off data because if you're arguing off data, you wouldn't be saying the things you're saying. Wait, what have I said that you think is wrong? Factually. I mean, who in Europe is causing um, riots? I'm currently? not talking about Europe. I'm talking about the United okay. States. I, it all is interconnected, dude, because Europeans are the ones who founded this country, and they came from Europe, and Europe is having similar problems, so when That's you look a stretch. at the parallels, you can understand. I don't even know what you mean by historical data. There's never been anything like this. I'm, I'm just curious what you said, what I've said that you think is factually you're just, incorrect. You're just, de you're just deflecting. I haven't um, deflected anything. You're the one that's hopping from topic to topic. Bring, every, every time I bring up Europe, you say, I'm not talking about Europe. But if Because you're talking... the things that you're saying about Europe are really misinformed, and I don't want to jump into like a massive discussion on individual... For, you can't even group these countries together. The problems that Germany is facing is going to be much different than the problems Sweden is facing. The problems in Sweden are going to be way different than the problems in the United Kingdom, who was part of the EU, who had different agreements than, than these it's other countries. Part of it. What... It's interesting. You're right. They would be facing different problems, it would seem, but they're all facing a very similar problem, which leads us to believe maybe they're there's a pattern here. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What's the pattern? The pattern is that when you have mass immigration from countries that don't value liberalism uh, and don't, you know, don't value equality between the sexes in the same way that Western countries do, uh, for whatever reason, um, they will affect the overall culture. And that's what's happening right now in the West. And how many terrorist attacks are there in Japan? If that was happening in, in the West, then why are we at it? Why why do we have more rights for different types of minority groups than have ever existed in all of human history across the West? Because, oh, you just proved my point. Because what the Western countries have incredibly liberal values and 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 do not yes. value and they've held on to those liberal values even though all these brown people are moving in. Even and though who we're getting, do you think is going to uphold those values? The people that immigrate here, that are raised here, that believe in the same values that we do. Do you think that every Mexican in the United the States? I, it seems so because the they're not all vote. I don't see Mexicans outside protesting abortions. That seems to be a white Christian thing. I don't see Mexicans outside, uh, you know, fucking protesting against gay rights. That seems to be a white Christian thing. Where are all of these Mexican groups? <laughs> Uh, oh, the times they are a changing. I just want to be a smart ass and say that uh, the the c cross cross racial cross religious conservative alliance is uh, is growing. <laughs> oh no! Protesting against civil rights and whatnot. I don't see this happening. What... Now there are a small minority of of. Christians who might do that, but we're talking. And, and, there, and first if you of all, talk about anti-abortion rights in the United States, you think it is a minority of Christians? Where do you think the majority of these people come from? Muslims, Muslims, for instance. You think they, that Muslims are the main opposition to pro-choice women's rights or whatever in the United States? No, not in the United States, because aren't that many of them here. But there are a ton in Europe, which is the crisis that they're facing now. And these people I'm not don't talking have about Europe. I'm values. talking about the United States. Okay, Even but Europe we... and the United States are interconnected in okay, the same thing. But but they're not. They're very 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 different places. Very, very different. different problems. Extremely very different. different. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh wow. There's very a point. Different. You How know that different? in Europe. You know that if you go to Europe, there's no such thing as white people, right? You know nobody says that, right? I understand that Europeans see each other as different groups of Europeans, but at the end of the day, they understand each other as Europeans. And they, you, you and they think, know you think that like a, even like, people mm. who live in the United Kingdom don't all see themselves as being like... I'm aware that Europeans see each other differently, and it's an American thing to brand all Europeans white. I understand that, but that just proves... The tribalism thing it's real but, it, but it's not it's obviously not because if you go to the united states we all the white people do see themselves as similar so obviously the tribalism is they've gotten over that part there first of all also no european at the end of the day do you ever see yourself as a north american do you think americans ever at the end of the day like ah oh, i feel like a north american at the end of the day like i'm the same as a canadian I do. and a mexican 
I do believe that uh, I do. We are different from Mexico, but very similar to Canada. And every and because if we're uh, white race, no, because hmm. our country is derived from the same culture uh, and hmm. had the same found, uh, similar founding stock, at least. Um, but I will stock say, founding you know, that's stock. That's another why, weird one. Why, why all these? By the way, Europe and America. It's not. It's not different. Even though you say it's different, it's not. It's but, to, what do you? What do you think is similar? It's totally different. We're to, we, we're incomparable places, dude. The United States is a massive country that has a massive border to the south of an unstable country. It's way different than say the United Kingdom, right? Who wasn't even having serious immigration issues. Whose entire economy and place in the EU makes them a very special country, which is much different than the country of Germany, which has had a massive budget surplus year after year after. Year, even after taking in fucking a million fucking refugees, which is massively different than any of the Nordic countries, than Sweden, Finland, uh, Norway, all of these places are all very different. It's a very, I'm not trying to be mean, but it's a very American thing to say all of these European countries are the same problem. That's so not true. The issues that white people face in fucking Northern Ireland is going to be way different than, than the difference between Southern and Northern Italians. All of these. Nah. Nah, homie. I, I, I think all European nations faced, uh, the mass immigration of the 2010s and it, it all affected them in similar and parallel ways so just summarizing the arguments while we're here because uh, we are we are coming up on the hour line uh, mark i want to be respectful of your time uh i have to be respectful of my own because i have to maintain a schedule if i'm going to be bringing you more content more often so uh these uh arguments so far is that john tron was saying that muslim immigration or you know middle eastern north african immigration is fucking up europe and then that there's parallels to the United States. Uh, Destiny first tried to retreat to the fact that the United States uh, is all that he's talking about and all that he's interested in. But uh, he also did kind of lean into it a little bit by saying that the parallels don't apply. I agree with Destiny on this one. So when you're talking about like, you can, you can look at Hispanic rates of crime and Hispanic rates of crime are actually less that of the native black population inside the United States of America. And on top of that, you know, I know Hispanics. I live in Florida. There's a shitload of fucking Hispanics here. There's a shitload of Puerto Ricans, shitload of Cubans, shitload of Mexicans, shitload of everybody. And largely, they're pretty cool dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they, they do get in, you know, working as a pol police officer. Hispanic community, sometimes they want to handle business on their own. So they'll get into fights or shootings or stabbings or whatever. Um, also they do have some domestic violence and alcoholism that I would say is probably higher than the middle class lily white suburbs whites. However, it is less than, uh, the black community, I would say. And as a result, I don't really see that huge of a problem with integration, especially when the second generation speaks English and they go to American public schools. And not only that, but it's a Christian colonial civilization, Hispanic and Latin American societies are descended from Spaniards colonizing Central and South America and mixing with the indigenous population. They have a parallel colonial story to Northern America. And with America, it's Europeans and 95% of our indigenous people died from disease. So we took over all of this territory and we didn't have as many indigenous people left because we largely displaced and killed them. So, you know, th these aren't the same story, but they're parallel. They share religions. They share uh, economic, a decent chunk of economic outlook. They share geographic proximity. They, there's just a lot more parallels between Latin American immigration into North America and also our integration as a continent versus Middle Eastern and North Africa and Europe, which has all of the antagonisms won of European nations against European nations, and two, Muslims against Christians, and Muslims against atheists. So there's a shitload more worrisome antagonism and cultural gaps that I think need to be bridged in Europe than in the United States, but that's my personal opinion. So, but gay people have the same rights as straight people under the system. They have the right to get married. They just can't marry the same sex. Nobody has the right to marry same sex. Okay. Super duper. Happy we're talking about the gays in comments. Colette based Connor with the real life experiences. Yeah, I touched a few grass. I meant, you know, I speak Spanglish. You don't need a right to marry same sex. Oh, you guys are talking about like gay marriage and shit. What the fuck is going on in chat? As a Puerto Rican, I can confirm everyone I know who is also Puerto Rican is of Christian faith. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, are, are we really so different? 
because you can tan better than I can and you like plantains and rice and fucking beans and fish and chicken. But guess what? I like I like chicken and fish. I just like bread more than I like rice and I don't like plantains that much. Is that really like, can we not bridge that cultural gap? Is me not liking plantains and and I, I do like flan. It's just not my favorite. But is me not liking flan like a, a huge, a huge cultural gap that we just can't cross? Like, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm going to read this even though I shouldn't. Spaniards bumping that native box. Yeah, that's one way to say it. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my God. Christ on a cracker. All right. Let's uh let's actually hit one hour, okay? These problems are massively different. You can't yes, group they're... all of Europe's problems in together and say they're the same thing as all of America. Uh, it, they're they, it's they're different, <laughs> but when like when you compare cyan and deep blue next to red, uh, these the bluish colors tend to look a little bit more similar, don't they? So my point is that they're all facing similar problems coming from a similar part of the world, what does that tell you? I don't think they're facing similar... I don't... This is why I didn't well, want to get into Europe. then you're not informed. I, I mean... I mean... You, uh, and the people in America want to stop that from happening. Now, Hillary Clinton wanted to speed up the refugees coming here. And, of course, that sounds good to people to say, of course, you know, I, who doesn't want to take refugees? It's a great humanitarian thing to do. But um, at, at what cost? You know, are At these what cost, re dude? How many refugees have committed crimes in the United States? Do you know how many? Well, we don't have the same migrant crisis as they do in Europe because oh, they share. Oh, because we're completely different countries with completely different problems. Do you know how many refugees have committed crimes in the United States? Ay, ay, ay! You are impossible, man, dude. Because just... I, the, because I know the data. <laughs> because two people. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Because two refugees in the United States were arrested for potentially funneling money to people in Iraq out of the eight hundred thousand <laughs> that have brought in. I know the numbers, dude. That's why it's frustrating to argue with somebody that wants to speak in generalities. Like, well, I, because you you have this very strange bizarre worldview that everything is falling apart that everybody experiences the same problems when that's completely not true that's the narrative being sold to you by people like breitbart by people like uh the spencer dude by people like but like the, i don't understand but so i'm trying to get a feel of your worldview but you can't give me like any specific examples or facts or figures so like it's I really hard you, to i am giving you an example i've given you example after example yeah, you you could you could have done i think this is 2017 so you could have done I, I think you could have done Pulse. I think you could have done the Boston Marathon bombing. I'm not sure if you could have done San Bernardino. As a matter of fact, let's just look it up. Let's make sure I'm not talking out of my ass right now. And by the way, like, I get it. You can say that these are statistically negligible. And I'll, I'll agree with you. I just don't think that we should be normalizing this shit within our society. And I think that if you look at the rabid anti-israel protests which by the way i know i got a few moose lambs in my in my chat or whatever i love you guys fight those zionists but <laughs> but when you see the shit where it's like yeah we should be able to kill zionists and they're just saying that on like the streets of toronto or ut austin this is like the this is the result of destiny's lackadaisical attitude towards m muslim in immigration and integration and assimilation so these concerns you can say they're statistically ne negligible and they're not existential i'll agree with you there but i think john tron's alarm is correct if poorly articulated and horribly argued and brought up to logical conclusions that he's not willing to bite down on uh so hold on so let's just check out san bernardino when did that happen dino shooting attack uh, so that was in 2015. So that happened. That was like 30 people. Boston Marathon bombing was 2013. So that was also before. Uh, Pulse nightclub. I swear to God, that was 2016. Shooting was June 12th, 2016. Uh, Bataclan shooting attack. I almost guarantee you that was 16. Uh, 2015. Um, the Marseille attack. Terrorist attack. Uh, truck attack. Truck attack. I almost guarantee you that was 2015 as well. Uh, 2016. Uh, what was uh, the other one? Uh, Charlie Hebdo. 
Hebdo. That was... Attack. Sorry if, I, if I'm, you know, pausing real quick, but... 2015. And then finally, uh, what was it? Swedish cartoonist beheaded. Lars Vilks. Uh, Lars Vilks killing. Lars Vilks killing. Oh, that was recent. Um, but they, there was another guy. Uh, cartoonist. Europe, I'll, I'll do European cartoonist. Sorry if I'm dragging this out, but I, I want to... I just want to emphasize how many of these there were killed. Um, I can't find the one that I'm looking for, but there was another one. There was another, like, he was either Norwegian or he was Sweden or something like that. He got killed. And then finally there was the Texas Muhammad shooting contest. <laughs> which was 2015. Which, all right, hold up. So this shit was fucking hysterical. So, like, here I am being an asshole about all these jihadist terrorist attacks or whatever. But what was fucking hysterical was they did a draw Muhammad contest in 2015 against the advice of law enforcement. A couple of jihadists showed up to the event and they got gunned down. <laughs> the jihadists, they got fucking killed because this is Texas, bitch. <laughs> I fucking love that. Anyways, uh, Grey Jedi, if we are supposed to change policy due to the terror shooting, what about the other mass shootings where people get mad? We ch changes of police are brought up. Mm, yeah, we, we could get into like a police response and gun control thing later. I have no problems talking about that. But I, I do think you have to treat jihadism and nihilist mass shootings as different things because the motivations are different. Not that your response won't be the same. Your response could potentially be the same, but your proactive measures in order to prevent them have to be different. Ginger... Ginger Miss Prime for five Australian dollars says, Desi annoys me that he bounces between talking and specifics or generalities depending on what debate he is having and whether it works for him. True. True. But that's a, that's a poly, that's the, the power of rhetoric. In order to become a good debater, you have to be able to not just be able to talk ge generalizations or specifics, but you also have to be able to track your arguments, track the opponent's arguments, and be able to be bounce to your strongest while attacking your enemy's weakest. It's one of the things that I think Destiny has almost perfected to a subconscious level that he is able to do that. Whereas I think with me, I'm, I'm very like single point attack, single point attack, single point attack. Uh, Destiny, I think, is a lot better at tracking multiple points at one time. At Counterpoints 40k, that being said, I am surprised of all the nations to face a massive counterattack in terms of far-right terrorism was in Norway. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Kind of wild, to be honest. They were like the most chill. All right, let's, uh, let, let's hit the hour mark. Wait, what countries, examples? White countries that are experiencing... It is basically in, in white countries, historically white countries, it's seen as a moral imperative that whites don't resist their own displacement if they resisted their race we haven't even that we, is we haven't even defined displacement so i'm just gonna let this ride is what i'm talking about it, you can see this in every white country on planet earth uh, you, okay i don't understand but again you going back to the central question you can't tell me what's so bad about white people becoming the minority you still haven't answered that question Are i have answered it a million times no people wants to become a minority in their own country if they don't have to they shouldn't do but it why but the people to, of america to, what does it do to look nice to be nice what is your argument that it I, I just I, I guess when i look at what it means to be an american being white doesn't seem to be part of that definition so when you say used to, to be. become a minority i don't understand this massive division on racial lines like i have to have this many white people in here if there are too many blacks or browns it makes me very uncomfortable like that I, I thought we were all americans i don't understand where this white black hold up this is okay hold on hold on, hold on. i'm gonna be a little bit mean okay this is destiny staying in his apartment for way too fucking long that's what this shit is i love so many hispanic people right i have good black friends who i also love and treasure i have good muslim friends who i love and treasure however acting like there is no tension between these tribal groups and we're all just American and we all get along and there's no dangers whenever you travel between different communities. That is because you are hanging out with middle class, 
and upper class streamers who are of various ethnic backgrounds. You are not traveling to the working class in poor ethnic enclaves that JonTron is uh, concerned about, rightly or wrongly. So this is a this is a little bit of I would say a privilege on Mr. Bennell's part. But let's continue. Brown thing comes from. I mean, I, I, I'm inclined to agree with you that that is how we should see each other as Americans. I do agree that. But also, we're dealing with something that's not that. We're dealing with a political paradigm, or we were at least, uh, we still are. The status quo thinks that the only logical conclusion to the country to atone for the sins of the white past is to keep letting in people from the third world until white people are minority. And that's just, that's what's happening. So if you, you can deny it all you want. But that's what's happening. Why are places like California that deal with more illegal that deal with more immigration than I think any other even individual country in the world I'm from aside California, from Russia? So, so why is so, California the strongest economy in the United States when they have the most Mexican immigrants? Because this country Number one. Geography. California is one of the I think it's one of the largest states in the nation. Number two. They're coastal, so they have access to water if they want it. They don't do enough desalinization, but they should. Three, they have a shitload of forests. Four, they have a shitload of agriculture. Five, it's one of the most physically beautiful places on the planet. And so some of the world's smartest people who make the most amount of money will pay through the fucking nose in order to live on the beach in California because it's just that goddamn beautiful. But, but pretending that there aren't teeming hordes of working class and middle class people who are barely scraping by getting taxed through the fucking nose in order to get a piece of that sweet California American dream, you're fucking crazy. You have to be upper middle class in California in order to be living a lifestyle that is middle class anywhere else. It is brutal. B -b -b brutal and there is a massive underclass in california industry is there because it's a if you're talking about los angeles or silicon I'm talking valley about the state like, of california why is the state of california the like the sixth strongest economy in the world when they deal with more mexican immigrants than any other state how is this possible <laughs> man I, I i because all the industry is there i don't know what's your point maybe this maybe this they have really good slave labor Yep. Oh, sorry we're not done. Let's Supply finish. of labor has helped the state grow a little bit. Maybe other people are able sure. to take up complementary positions. Maybe every single economist agrees that immigration grows an economy for everybody. That more people don't can know enjoy. If every single economist. Pretty agrees. much every single economist, even the even the main leading people who are on the hold on on the immigration side, more or less agree with that, right? Borjas is the and, leading <laughs> economist who argues for less immigration in the and, United uh, States, and even and, he acknowledges that. And and every single pollster said Hillary Clinton was going to win. Do you think that pollsters are of the same academic? The Constitution at the end of the day is just a symbol. It's nothing but a piece of paper. People have killed and died for symbols for the entirety of human history. Rome is some shitty city in Italy. But the idea of Rome was a double-headed eagle conquering the known world and becoming an economic and military powerhouse that offered civilization and security in a world of barbarism. Don't underestimate symbols who fights for rome now nobody me i fight for space rome i i fight for the imperium of man that's what i fight for i fight for the continuation of rome in culture and hopefully eventually literally <laughs> credence as an academics analysis of an economic situation do you think that's a fair and comparison we're living in we're living in a, a political paradigm that values appearances over of course these people are going to say that because they don't want the the shit storm wait of course people are going to say what that china there are that california's economy is huge or no they're going to say things like of course immigration is wonderful diversity is our strength this is if you it's don't say about, these buzzwords it's... How do you think Whoever. you grow an economy if the population begins to die off? Where do you get new workers from? Like, what do you, why does an economy have to keep gro growing forever? Because that's what our entire based. economy is based off of, is perpetual growth. I mean, it's, I mean would Game you be happy if cringe. the GDP growth was zero or started to dip into the negatives? Is that a positive thing? People don't need gadgets 
all the time, bigger, In perpetuity. less expensive gadgets. That's, That's not, easy for you to say you... because you're fucking rich, dog. If you're a poor dude and you can oh all of a sudden God. afford a cell phone, that's a really cool thing. Why are you advocating for a decrease in the standard of living amongst poor people? Poor people Look, today have TVs, have internet computers, have cell phones. These are awesome things. These should be celebrated. To be fair, I am, I'm not arguing the economic of this, the economics of this. I'm arguing the cultural impact. That's, okay, then we can stay to the true. culture. Then, then, don't, then don't talk about the economic then because that's absolutely what nobody on the academic side agrees on. No academic is going to tell you that immigration hurts the economy. No credible one, at least. I've never seen it before. But, I mean, we could stay on the culture side, in which case, why do you think white people are yep. so important to the American identity? No, J Jin Germis brought it up immediately. It's exactly what I was thinking. De Destiny is raw materialist in his uh, analysis. And that, that's fine. You know, plenty of people are because that's all they can analyze. However, however, I am, I am more on the JonTron side where I am not a rich man. And the things that have made me happiest are not necessarily material goods. And I think that the things that we're looking for, like purpose... Decent employment, stable wages, decent benefits, the ability to retire, the ability to take care of your family, the ability to spend time with your family and all that kind of stuff that isn't solely reliant on GDP number go up. So that that's where I think uh, Destiny loses me a little bit. Identity. Why can't brown and black and all these other people be included as well? Why does it matter if the demographics shift around a little bit? Because clearly they... It, Tribe, are you doubting the existence of tribalism? I think. That do you believe in it? Do you believe that, in it or not? The fact that you are here talking to me, defending white people as a half Iranian, half Hungarian, seems to speak against the notion uh, of tribalism being this like embedded or this uh, embedded thing that. Can you never be said changed. that shit. The fact that we are more integrated today than we ever have been, that women and men get along better, that people of different races get along better, that Jim Crow is gone, that all of these things are happening, it seems to point to the fact that we can integrate more as a society. Mm -hmm. Are people getting along better? It seems to me they're just screaming at each other a lot recently. That's the I mean, internet, though. I mean, depending on the news channels you watch, sure. But yeah, I would say that today people... Uh, I, Twitter. Maybe Twitter is a bit... That's not a news channel, is it? I mean, you have a little me bit of selection. Me and you are screaming at each other. I, I, <laughs> me and you are screaming at each other right now. I mean, you have a little bit of selection bias, though. I mean, we're specifically yeah. looking for somebody we disagree with to talk to. But I mean, like... I... Okay. We hit an hour. Um, yeah, and that that's a, another point. We're not getting along as well as we used to. Hey, man, fighting on Twitter, uh, we are not getting along the way we used to. Hey, 150 years ago, there was something called the Civil War. Half a million Americans killed each other with muskets, and they shit themselves to death in the fucking mud pits fighting over slavery. The United States was not more unified back then. Before that... Uh, we fought a civil war against the British. We were stabbing each other with fucking bayonets and also shooting each other with muskets in order to secure trade routes and trade. That was not a peaceful time between uh, different peoples. Before that, we had Native Americans scalping colonists and we had colonists shooting the fuck out of Native Americans with cannons and muskets. That was not a peaceful time in which people were getting together. Uh, you know, moving up into the 20th century, even looking at the civil rights or the riots of the 1960s, or if you're looking at the drug war between the 70s and the 90s. Like, listen, you can go to any decade except for the 90s and thousands, and there was not a broad, unified United States of America. So, yeah, that, that's fucking... That, that, is, that is cope, and it's romanticizing an era that never existed. So... <laughs> Are you fighting for white rights? Yes. I fight for all rights, including the rights of the whites. I fight for all of humanity, except for communists. <laughs> uh, the GDP and its stability with clear policies that disable monopolistic or duopolistic and enables a better distribution of wealth enables that gratification of living in peace. I agree with you, Dan Ditzo. I'm just saying that GDP number go up is not the only thing that's important in that equation. As a matter of fact, I would say that stability, banning monopolies, and enabling better distributions of wealth is probably as important, if not more important, than the size of the economy. So yeah. We are a baby nation. Let us figure it out. True. It's actually pronounced white, right? True. All right. Let's show one more time and then we're going to end the stream for tonight. However, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to be on more often. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you my evil plan. 
So my evil plan is to start going live more frequently, to start doing these, uh, you know, too long didn't watch reviews and then shoot 10 to 20 minute uh, segments that summarize debates for people who don't want to watch the entire thing. And we are going to post that to the Counterfire channel because that's going to be our main political channel. But the point is to start streaming more often. That way I'm around more often. If you guys want to hang out, we can hang out. We can talk, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if, uh, and the reason why we want to do that is we want to start ramping up now, even though I am tired. Um, we want to start ramping up now. That way, December, January time frame. if we do have the metrics that enable us to go full-time, then we can go full-time. If we don't have the metrics, then we might have to push it off another year, but it is what it is. Then uh, what I would say is if you do have money, um, you know, go ahead and check out the Indiegogo counter armory. I'll go ahead and link that one more time. Uh, basically, this is going to be my little fun to buy a CNC machine and some stuff for the garage in order to make a workspace and maybe some metalworking equipment and all that kind of stuff so I can continue to build science fiction weapons. So hopefully we can get multi hundred thousand view videos that then in turn subsidize the channel that then in turn allow us to go full time faster. Um, if you do have money, please donate to the Indiegogo, become a YouTube member. That way you're paying us on a monthly basis. Go to patreon.com slash counterpoint, support us there, um, or join the Discord or whatever the fuck. But um, I do appreciate you being here. We did have like 50 to 60 people on YouTube. We did have like five to 10 people on Twitch. Um, so, you know, 60, 70 on a Tuesday night, not too bad. And hopefully the more consistent we get, the more we grow. So it should be fun. Um, but yeah, dying to a tiger is also a skill issue. Being enslaved or colonized is also a skill issue. I mean, true, but that's why I'm happy that I am European because we basically kick the shit out of each other for a thousand years, but then we ended up being really good at getting the shit kicked out of us and also getting our shit kicked in. Someday I'll make a Protoss melee weapon. Oh, sweet. Maybe I can make it for you. And counterpoints 40k. So if I am understanding you correctly, it's like regular communism, but with more streaming. <laughs> Listen, communism is not when you give money to somebody else, okay? It's also not when the government does things. I know that a healthy chunk of uh, rightoids believe that, but that is not the definition of communism. I will not bore you with the definition tonight. We will save that for another debate. But I am going to leave you fine folks tonight. Go find your local drama frog channel in order to watch. I parasocially love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic night. I hope you enjoy all of your side projects and fun stuff. And yeah, just keep up the great work, bro, as always, and keep moving forward always. Just maybe we should all watch the latest Sodaz episode, RC Amersault. Uh, not tonight, but in general, sure. We could, we could do that. Like maybe we'll do Warhammer Wednesdays where we just look at sci-fi stuff. Yes, it takes more skill than bitching out lack of happiness is the best and properest nations on the planet. True. Touch grass, chat, be glad to be an American. True. All right. Parasocial love to you and yours. Have a fantastic night. Bye for now.